Hi everyone, thanks so much for joining us here at Media Day, which can only mean one thing, the NBA season is almost here, guys. I'm Amanda Flugrad alongside Mark D'Amico, and we have Eddie House in the house, joining us all day at the desk. Eddie, thanks so much for your time. Oh man, I'm glad to be here, and I'm excited about this season. Oh this yeah. Is Especially after what happened yesterday. Wait, oh, what, yeah. well, what happened yesterday? <laughs> oh, we'll talk about it. Yeah, we'll, <laughs> we'll, we'll get, get into right that. into it. But really quickly, we're bringing back the Twitter questions for our show today. We want to make sure that you, the viewers, are able to be involved. So if you do have a question for either of us or the players, go to Twitter, tweet us your question using the hashtag Celtics Media Day. We'll try to get through as many as we can. But guys, getting right to it. I mean, what a day yesterday. The Woj bomb goes off on my phone, and I feel like the Boston Celtics right now are kind of assembling the Avengers, it seems <laughs> like, with the Drew Holiday trade that happened. But acquiring Drew Holiday from the Portland Trail Blazers in exchange for Robert Williams and Malcolm Brogdon and two first round draft picks. Just what are your thoughts on the Celtics making this move, Eddie? Well, I thought that at, at the point that Drew Holiday got traded to Portland, we all understood that he probably wasn't going to stay there. Right now, Portland's pretty much NBA Siberia. Nobody really <laughs> – I mean, really, though, like they don't win. They can't attract free agents. They have a lot of young talent over there. But if you are a veteran and you have the, you have the resume of a Drew Holiday – you don't want to be in Portland. You want to go somewhere where you can compete for a championship. So I knew Miami was going to be after him. And I was hoping, and I, I had an extensive talk with Kevin Miller, with um, also with Chris Forsberg, like, what, Forsberg, what can we do to get Drew Holiday? And I was on the plane yesterday, right, flying in here. And it was, I seen it on the bottom line, and I dropped a big F bomb, <laughs> loud, right? And everybody's looking at me like, what's going on? What's wrong? I said, oh, the Celtics is traded for Drew Holiday. Yes, I'm extremely <laughs> excited. So I, it changed the landscape of the Eastern Conference. And I believe that this is a team we, we, we do need maybe some more depth on the front court. But besides that, what we have is definitely championship caliber. Listen, five days ago, when the trade happens and Damian Lillard is going to the Milwaukee Bucks, this was the worst case scenario for the Milwaukee Bucks of the result of that, right? They knew that Drew Holiday was going to get traded somewhere. They did not want him here in Boston. Now he's here in Boston. And the Celtics have the guard that three years ago, Damian Lillard said on a podcast, that's the best defensive guard in the NBA. So you know that there's, there's a little space in Dame's mind where Drew was living. So a great acquisition to me, in my opinion, this gives the Celtics the best top six in the NBA. They upgraded the top of their roster. And Eddie, my opinion is always you win titles with the very top of your roster. You don't win it with the top, the best 10 man rotation. You win it at the very top of the roster. And the Celtics upgraded the top of the roster yesterday. He comes in having that NBA championship experience. He's also known as just a great locker room guy, winning the NBA Sportsmanship Award in 2020 21 season. What can he bring this Celtics team also, just being in the locker room in veteran well, presence? Well, well, besides the locker room veteran presence, being a great human being and all, the, all those things, I think on the court is the most important thing he's going to bring to the Celtics is think about the last two seasons, right? We've had problems organizing ourselves in big time moments. We turn the basketball over. We finally have a true point guard. And what I mean by that, a guy that can organize, a guy that's a pass first and then he defends. And his versatility on the defensive end is second to none where he can switch depending on it one through four. And we've seen it before where he's defended fours and just had to get physical with him. You don't want him to do that every every single possession, but having that versatility and then having Derek White over there, I just think that this team has got so much stronger on the perimeter as far as defensively, and that was some of the things that we were lacking, but he's going to bring a sense of organi uh, organizing the team, getting guys in spots, and I think the most important thing that people are missing out on is that now Jason Tatum or Jalen Brown are not going to be the guys initiating the offense. They'll be catching the ball with a live dribble, and they'll be catching it in scoring positions to where they're able to go to work, and he'll be able to set the table for them. The other thing you got to think about with Drew is that when, when this guy was in Milwaukee, we're looking at a guy who was maybe the number two option on a championship contending team, right? They go to the finals and win. You know, you could maybe say Middleton was a number two, but he, he might have been borderline the number two scorer on that team. He comes over here. He's number three at best, right? Like, he doesn't have to have all that pressure on his shoulders every time down the floor. He can orchestrate the offense, make sure the Celtics get into their sets. 
but then let Jason and Jalen kind of take over from there. And I think that's going to help him preserve himself at the other end of the court. Can I say one quick thing about that? I, I, I like what you said about that, the one and two. I think that with adding him now, we don't know who the three is. Exactly. You You've know, got a three and a four. Who and are, whoever is going to be, they could, and it goes on a night-to-night -night basis. You know who number one and number two is going to be, or you want to say one and one A. You know what that's going to be. As far as the, the next option after those two guys, it could be Drew one night. It could be Derek White one night. It could be Al Horford another night. It could be Porzingis another night. And I think that versatility on the offensive end – added with the defensive versatility. That's where you come together as a championship caliber team, and that's what I think this trade has done. Again, I feel like we still or maybe we need a little bit more depth yep. uh, because Al doesn't go back to back, and we could talk about that a little later. I have a few names that I'll throw out there, but I really believe that this is a championship caliber team, and if they go out there and, you know, number one, the health is the number one issue. It, it, if we stay healthy, we're going to be very hard to contend with. To follow up, Porzingis, you mentioned him. Celtics acquired him this offseason. Just adding another big, really, to what they're already, what are they have with Al Horford, but obviously now Robert Williams is no longer here. How do you see Porzingis fitting in with this team? Well, I think that what you lose with Rob, right, is you lose some rim protection and you lose uh, a guy that was versatile on the, on the defensive end where he was switching out at times when he was healthy on guards and being able to keep the guard in front of him, contest shots, rebounding the basketball. And I think one thing that Rob did fantastic that we we might miss a little bit it was the offensive rebounding he was a great offensive rebounder he had a knack for the basketball but I think when you add Porzingis you know Rob didn't really look at the basket unless it was a lob now Vertical you got a, now you got it, a yeah. threat to where you can throw it into the post if they want to switch on pick and rolls it's a size difference you could work him out he can catch the ball at the elbow he can iso he can do so many different things so I'm looking at that pick and roll with him and Drew with uh, him and uh, Derek White with him and Tatum with him and Brown those are tough matchups for people to have to try to figure out what are you going to give up because on the back end you're going to have a Jalen or Jason rolling up or a Drew rolling up or a Derek White rolling up so now you're going to have to figure out like what are we going to do with Al spacing the court another great addition for this team you talked earlier about the Celtics struggles kind of at the end of games in the playoffs right that's what's held them back from winning championships in the last couple of seasons I don't think they're going to have those issues anymore. When you bring in a guy like Drew Holiday who can get the offense set and running, and then you add a guy like Kristaps Porzingis who you can throw the ball to in the post like you talked about. I mean, he's so versatile offensively, and it's just an element that the Celtics have not had really ever. In re I mean, since KG, I would say they've never had a guy that versatile. Maybe Al Horford in his early days. Yeah, and versatile is KG. Don't say that. Don't. Do no, no. That. I'm, just, I'm saying since KG, this I, is, I this is the closest that we've had to that. Right, right. And adding that element around guys like Jason and Jalen with an element that they've never had around them, I think it's just going to help them execute at a higher level down the stretch in, in playoff games. And it's going to make te uh, the opposing teams have a much larger challenge of trying to slow them down when the going gets tough in those final minutes of key, key games. There's no denying that you can replace a guy in Marcus Smart, really, and just his bulldog mentality. But how do you see this team now stepping up and that leadership role that he did have with this group, but also just his defensive mindset, too, and maybe Jalen and Jason taking that next step and, and being even more vocal yeah, this you year? You hit the nail on the head right there. I think this is a chance for them to step forward in their leadership role. I think they, they, they had been taking back seats to Al Horford, to the vets, right? Al Horford to... Marcus Smart, who was here before they got here, you know, and so and, and kind of took over the locker room as being the guy that's in there that's going to be verbal, but he's going to go out there and lay his life on the line. It seems like every night diving on the floor, putting his body in harm's way for a W. I think this is a great opportunity for both of these players to step up and show their leadership and take over the leadership role for this team. But again, when you assemble a team that has veterans, like we have veterans on this team, so guys that know how to play, you, all you have to do is just kind of remind. It's not you have to be a leader every yeah. single night. You could lead by example, but you got Drew Holiday, who's a leader in his own right. You got Al Horford, who's a leader in his own right. So. You have depth in that area, but I do want to see them take a step. Like when the going gets tough, 
or when we need a bucket, I, I would lo love to see JT move out the way, I got this. Or Jalen, if he's out on the, I move out the way, I got this. Or the same way on the defensive end, saying, hey, he got it going, let me go get him. Mm -hmm. You know, I got him right now. I I'll take him for the next few minutes. Don't worry about, I ain't even worried about scoring because I know we got Drew. I know we got Porzingis. I know we got uh, Jalen. So I could go expend some energy on the defensive end trying to lock this guy up. So I think with, with, with it, they're going to have to take a step forward. Um, and, and I'm interested to see that step that they're going to take. And Jalen Brown is now the longest tenured Celtic. Gonna, isn't that weird? I mean, that's crazy that's to think about. That's so crazy but, to think. But when you have that title, I think that comes along with even an additional amount of respect in the locker room. When and you're the guy, exactly, too. you're the guy who's been here the longest. And I do think, listen, I, are Jason and Jalen these loud voices in the locker room that are boisterous and they're, they're going to go after people in the locker room? Probably not. That's really not their type of leadership. But to Eddie's point, it might be more on the court, really, like leading by example. They're going to have their voice. There's no question about that. But I do think that maybe in the voice steps up a little bit. But on the court in particular, I think you're going to see much more of a leadership role from those guys. And when Brad Stevens made that trade, for Porzingis, I think there was a part of him that was calculating in there and saying, well, you know, part of the addition of this move is also giving these guys more of a leadership opportunity. And when he makes a calculated decision like that, I think they're going to listen, and I think they're going to step up to the plate. And you have Peyton Pritchard already saying that the guys, they're, they're here early, they're working out. He's feeling that sense of urgency and that both Jalen Brown and Jason Tatum are setting that foundation early for this team heading into training camp. So that is exciting to see. Uh, but, guys, you do look around just the East, and really, <laughs> I mean, we, we can get into the tough competition of everything that's been going on, but the Milwaukee Bucks getting Damian Lillard uh, teaming up with Giannis, how does this this move really um, impact the competition now in the East in the landscape. Well, I think it was a great move for Milwaukee, and and when I feel the big three, unless there are extremely smart basketball players and great on the defensive end, I, I think that the big three that have that are different, right? So Dame plays different. His style of play is very different than Chris Middleton and Giannis. Chris Middleton's is different from Dame and Giannis. And then Giannis is different from them too. Uh, so to me, that's a recipe for success. When you have three, the big three, very similar to the big three that was here. KG did something different than Ray did and Paul did something different than both, you know, so, and they all had defensive versatility as well. And I think that one thing that Milwaukee is, is gonna be lacking is perimeter defense, but, their interior defense is second to none. When you talk about Giannis, what he can do at the rim, rim protection, you talk about Brooke Lopez, and you also you talk about Bobby Portis who could come in and give you some versatility on the defensive end, um, switching out on point uh, on guards and guarding uh, the perimeter, but then also protecting the rim, getting down and dirty. So I think that they have great interior defense, but the, the thing is, is that when you're a really, really good player, you figure it out. And I think when you have something to play for, you play a little different. That screen that you maybe were laying on in Portland, you fighting over the top of that screen hard because you know at the end of the day what you're fighting for. In Portland, there was nothing they was fighting for. <laughs> I think that the Celtics are they're, they're the leaders in the pack, in my opinion. And when, when you're looking at the Eastern Conference, for a couple days, Milwaukee took the lead, but now that the Celtics got Drew, I think they're right back at the top. So I see the Celtics as the leaders. I think it's them and Milwaukee and then everyone else. And when you look out west, I think it's a three-team race out there as well. Oh, we got Jordan Walsh on set. <laughs> What's up, Rook? What's up? How are you? Good. How are y'all doing? First media day. I know. It How's is. it going so far? It's well. I haven't got kicked out of a line yet. So well, you will uh, in How about five. No, How does kidding. that jersey feel? feel on you though. Oh, oh, amazing. You see the 2-7 is a new number. I'm excited. That's what's up. What made you choose 77? 27. 27. 27, okay. <laughs> so, um, I mean, Boston, all the numbers are retired, obviously, with the great history of players. Um, I really didn't have, I had a limited, you know, choice of numbers. And this was one of the ones I liked, so I chose this. Ended up working out, I hope. Y yes, it did. Uh, we look at you and, and coming in, obviously, you had a great uh, performance out at Summer League. What did you take from that that you're trying to kind of roll up into the start of this training camp? Well, um, for me, the whole point of, you know, summer league was, you know, to play like I would if I was with the Celtics, you know, being able to back up guys like Tatum and Brown, you know, just being able to compliment their game, um, taking open shots, you know, playing defense, being aggressive is what the coaches told me to do. And so I took that 
you know, with, with the great responsibility and went out there and did my best. And shot 41% from three-point range. Is that something we can expect here going into the regular season? I hope so. That's setting a great tone, number. Setting the tone. <laughs> For sure. <laughs> but when you were drafted, you said it was coming to the Celtics was, was a dream for you. What does it mean to be here now and, and just be a part of this team? I mean, it means the world to me. You know, um, joining the Celtics, which, you know, in my opinion, and knowing y'all's opinion, that's the best organization that there is in basketball. So, it's, uh, you know, to be in a place with such good history, with such good vets, you know, to the team who can who can lead me to my to my future, you know, it's, a, it's an amazing feeling, especially being surrounded with guys, you know, like Al, even coaches and staff like Brad and Joe. Um, it's an amazing feeling. I'm glad that it was Boston, for sure. I, I hear Al's been kind of taking you under his wing, <laughs> offering you advice. As a vet should do. Yes. <laughs> Tell us how that relationship has been. I mean, it's amazing. Um, you know, he's been able to tell me a couple things. You know, I've asked him a couple questions. Like, we have a gala coming up, and I'm, I asked him what I should wear, like accessories and all that. But he's um, he's been mentoring You're me. You're asking Al for fashion advice? I, yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> I, I don't know if that's, that's the, the best question spot. to ask him. You should be asking him, is he going to get you something? Yeah, there you yeah. go. <laughs> he's supposed to be taking care of you that way. But let, let me flip to it. When you come out on the court, right, for the most part, you, you average 16 in summer league, right? You went out there, played, shot 41%, looked damn good, right? Very surprising to me because I really hadn't seen much film on you, but I was able to watch, and I was surprised at your offensive skills. But the, the thing that I think the team is really going to need is your defense. And how are you going to embrace that when you come in, you know, subbing for Jason or Jalen? How are you going to embrace that role? Um, I feel like my defense is what got me here. It's what, you know, got me in the position that I'm in. And so I'm never going to forget where I came from. Um, that's the foundation of my game, being a defender. You know, I'm not always going to get the shots that I did in summer league. I'm not always going to get those, those open opportunities. But I'm always going to be able to pick up 94 feet, guard the best player, get steals, be in the passing lanes. That's something I can do every night that I know I can bring to the team. Okay, so say nobody ever seen you play before. Mm -hmm. What? do you bring defensively besides, you know, you be like your, your switching ability, your versatility. Talk about your skill set on the defensive end. Of course. Um, obviously, like you said, switching and being versatile. Um, but also, you know, just being active, being a guy who's, you know, the energy on the court is unmatched. Um, diving for loose balls, um, screaming at the crowd, screaming at, you know, teammates. You know, just being an energy guy who uplifts everybody on the team by, you know, getting stops or just being energetic in general. I'll tell you something else that he brings. If he reaches his arms out, he might be able to touch you from yeah, over here. Yeah, he could give me five or <laughs> seven. Let's try it. Dab let's me try off. It. Seven, seven foot one and three quarters <laughs> on the wingspan. <laughs> Number 11 of all of the players at uh, the draft combine as a small forward. That doesn't happen all the time. How does that length impact your ability to defend? How, how do you use that to your advantage? So, like you said, it's definitely an advantage. Um, being in the passing lanes, you know, interrupting defenders or off, people on offense, um, really being able to get up in people and make them uncomfortable is the most biggest thing because, you know, I can reach and still be bad enough to where if you mm -hmm. drive, I can recover, um, but also being able to swipe at the ball and still be in position to be able to guard a drive. So it's, it's, it's definitely a big part of my game. And if somebody is a little quicker than you, you could play off of them if they pull up. You right there, and you can contest it, or maybe get a deflection. Exactly. Yep. Yep. Where are you at in terms of understanding the system at both ends? I mean, obviously, you're about to start installing the real system starting tomorrow. But in terms of coming off a of summer league, taking what you learn there, in terms of being in your mind of what you guys are trying to accomplish at both ends. Um, yeah, so um, a couple of things I've learned. I just learned about the, like three for ones and two for ones and what time to do all that. Um, but Coach Joe has also told me, you know, about, you know, on defense, if we're on defense in that situation, like do we want to double team? Do we want to hit? Like what do we want to do? And so I'm trying to pick up little schemes like that, you know, for late end of quarter stuff that's going to, you know, give the team a boost going into whatever halftime or end of quarter or whatever it may be. I got one piece of advice for you, Rook. Stay in the film room. Stay in the film room, the game will slow down for you. For sure. Thank you. And that's veteran yeah. advice. <laughs> veteran well, advice Jordan, from thank Eddie you. House. Thank you so much for joining us. We appreciate it. Thank, thank you. Thanks, Jordan. We're looking forward to it, man. Appreciate it. All right, folks, tonight at 8 p.m., catch a special media day edition of Celtics Post Up on NBC Sports Boston. Amina Smith, Brian Scalabrini, our own Eddie House, and Chris Forsberg have the best interviews of the day and preview the upcoming season. It's presented by Eastern Propane and Oil. They're in your neighborhood. There's the magic man right there. Hello, everybody. Hey, Brad. The magic man. Good to see you. The magic man. <laughs> What's going on? I got it. What do we got here? Live stream. Oh, yes. Better not say anything stupid. Okay. Can't promise it. Brad said he better not say anything stupid, but he, he's not going to promise anything. <laughs>
<laughs> we're up on camera now. Yes. Well, Brad Stevens joining us now. And, and Brad, I had said at the top of the show, it feels like this Celtics team is almost assembling the Avengers. <laughs> it feels like with just the Drew Holiday trade and, and getting him here. Walk us through, how did you get that deal done yesterday? Well, it, it was a long process. I don't think it was obviously um, one day. It, it's listen when you when you pay the price we paid, right? With and and the and the picks are the picks, but but specifically Rob and Malcolm and and Rob, who we've seen grow up here, and um, you know I, that's a hard thing to do. Um, so to get an idea of what they ultimately want you know what's feasible and then how it you know portends to work when you put it all together you know you're trying to weigh all that stuff um, but I just didn't I just don't think you can pass up on an opportunity to get a guy like Drew um, as I said you know just in my media session I think um, when you add in what he's what we all know he can do on the court with the kind of person and teammate he is um, you know just a good fit for us I got, I got a quick one. Yeah. So when he got traded to Portland, is that when you first picked up? Because you know he wasn't staying in Portland. We all knew he wasn't staying in Portland. It was that I, when you were like, hey, we got to try to do whatever we can to get him? Is that how that process well, I'm went? No, I've, I've known Joe Cronin for a long time. We've talked several times over the past few years and have, you know, and, and have had really transparent conversations about, you know, um, what we think of each other's teams and what we're kind of – and know what – guys are like it became when it became um, more of a question of where Dame might go I think you started to think about okay who would end up going to Portland that they may not keep as part of their their group and so when you start doing the math on the money around the league you can limit it to maybe 10 to 15 guys mm -hmm. and um, so we were having those discussions in case something came up, didn't know how it would all shake out. You know, have tried to get Drew Holiday on the Celtics for since I've been the coach. I know I would go into Danny's office every year and be like, "Hey, can we get Drew Holiday somehow?" <laughs> um, and so, um, you know, and so when he when that hit, yes, the whole office walks in and says, "Is there a way to get Drew Holiday here?" You know, and so then we. Just start working on it, and, and you know it's hard because there's a lot of good teams with a lot of that that uh, have a lot of great assets and great players, and you may get them, you may not. It's also probably hard that it happened the day before training camp starts, right? I'm just curious. You've been in that coaching seat. How does it shift things at all for Joe when he's maybe planning to have Rob and Malcolm here yesterday, and then it switches going into today? Well, I think the good news is, is as you as you prepare for a season, you prepare for a couple of different ways of playing. You prepare for being a little bit bigger, and you prepare for playing a little bit smaller. And you know that in the course of a game, no matter how you start a game or how you sub, that you're probably going to be smaller or longer, right? And so you, you're really prepared for both. Mm -hmm. Um, and then Drew is an easy guy to assimilate into a group. He can guard four positions. He's tough. He's smart. He's a good passer. Um, he wants to win. Like, it, this isn't like, I don't think this is as hard to get a guy to move into a group um, as, some, as some people might be. Um, and, and, I, and he knows, you know, he has familiarity with some staff and, um, you know, played with Jason in the Olympics and, um, so there's a lot of, you know, we're hopeful that it's a smooth transition. What I liked about the, the move was it gives us the, a, a true point guard for the first time. I mean, I know Marcus played point. And I know Derek played some point. But I feel like they're more scoring point guards. And I don't think Marcus was the traditional type of point guard where he can organize. He did a great job, but I feel like at times, the last two years, we had organization problems where late in games, we weren't as organized as we should be. Guys weren't in the right space. And then the other thing on top of that, and I was telling them earlier, I feel that he will be able to not only organize, but get our guys, Jason and Jalen, the ball with a live dribble in scoring positions, as opposed to them coming down court, having to fight downhill on a high pick and roll. I think it just opens up everything for us. The spacing on the court is going to be 
it's going to be hard for people to guard them, yeah. especially when we I have so. the right. <laughs> well, I hope so. I, I think, um, you know, the game has changed so much, right? So when we talk about traditional point guards, you know, there's teams have played, you know, trying to be bigger all around the board and be able to switch as much as possible defensively, trying to put as many playmakers on the floor as possible. Obviously, everybody's got to be able to shoot so that you can, you know, they have to guard out to the three-point line and, and now beyond. Um, we were, you know, we've played with Jason bringing the ball up as much as we've played with Peyton bringing the ball up, right? So it's really who gets us in there probably isn't as big to us as making sure we're all in the right spots, organized and ready to attack with threats, you know, everywhere. Mm -hmm. And we've had a really good team. Like those guys that you just met, they're yes. really good. And but we think also Drew's really good. So hopefully the the way that it all fits together, the way it all works, the way they all accentuate each other is, is good. I do think that you know, everybody talks about and rightfully so our two young wings, you know, and Jason and Jalen. But when you start looking at what Derek and Drew can do together, both Scary. offensively Def and defensively, yes. you know, Derek's Derek's pick and roll numbers and are off the charts. Um, the way he shot the ball last year, the way he shot the ball in the in the last few weeks since he's been back in Boston, and the way that both he and Drew can really chase screens and and you know lock people down is you know should be fun to watch. You got anything? Oh, All I right. was just I, I was going to go. Um, but just with Drew and that that championship DNA, how do you see that also complementing Jalen and Jason and, and just helping them having been there before? Yeah, I think that Drew is one of my favorite things about what I've learned about him is he just has amazing like awareness of the room like he I don't think there's going to be like, hey, I've been to the mountaintop. This is the only way. Like, I think he's he, he, he knows he's entering a really good team, and he just wants to help and add and be the best version of himself. Um, he's, he's just a really good person. And so to have, you know, we're, we're lucky. I, I don't know if we have – I think we have two guys in their 30s now, <laughs> right, with Al and Drew. So we're still pretty young overall, but – um, but our guys have a lot of experience that are younger and they've been through a lot. And, you know, I can't think of two better guys in their 30s to lead a group. Brad, you touched on this at the start. You've said this since you took over this role. In order to get something, you always got to give something up. You gave up a couple of really good players, guys that you loved having on this team and in this locker room. But the one in particular I want to ask about is losing Robert Williams. Yeah. You guys drafted him. You developed him. He became a great player, all defensive player. Not having him now uh, puts obviously a little bit more pressure on the other two big men that, that are still here in, in terms of, you know, starters and, and all stars in the past in Horford and Porzingis. How do you guys maneuver here now that you don't have those minutes from Rob in that rotation? What's, what's kind of the next step of how you guys organize that? Well, we'll see how Joe wants to start, how we got, we're going to play as a team. I don't know how that's all going to look. I think I, we all have a good idea who our best players are, and so we'll see how it all fits together. But I do think that when you look at Chris Stapps can play with any of our other bigs, Al can play with any of our other bigs, you know, we will try to make sure that anybody else that we fill into those roles just play with great competitiveness, can pass, have skill, and can do everything they can to, to, to accentuate those people around them. We don't, we don't we're, we're not looking for the next Hakeem Olajuwon, right? We don't need somebody that's going to score 30 and grab 20. I'll take him. Don't get me wrong. We'll take him. But, but knowing but, you, you might, yeah, you no, might no, no, trade no, no, for him but, tomorrow. But, but I do think we are, we're looking for accentuators. So I, I do have this. So you were talking about the bigs and how they could play together. We know Al doesn't play on second nights or back to backs or whatever, yeah. right? Are you looking to add more depth in the front court at some point? Yeah, I, and I will say this. I, I said this over in the media session. I'm really – I've had a – I've been lucky because in the last three or four weeks, we've had so many guys in the gym. They're doing small group work. They're playing open gym. So I've seen these guys, what they look like as far as how ready they are. And really positions, point guard through center, everybody's improved. And I'm excited about that because I think that, you know, when, when you're looking to fill out a team around those best players, right, it's about, again, competitiveness, skill, 
and just doing something small that you do well mm -hmm. to add to the mix. So we don't like, like I, I do think if we, you know, if we add to our front court at all, it'll be focused on just motor, right? A and rebounder, shot blocker, things like that. Motor, and, yeah, and, and that's all. If you can get a great shot blocker, that's great. Um, a little bit easier said than done. <laughs> no I doubt. Mean, that's, that's for sure. We're going to miss Rob in a lot of ways. But adding Drew, I mean, at the same time, we talk about what that him and, and Derek can do on the perimeter, and Jason and Jalen have both said publicly that they want to be all defensive players this year. What can you guys accomplish on the perimeter from a defensive perspective? Well, once you, once you lose a little bit of rim protection, you better not let them get there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Simple as that. We got some guys that can yeah. keep right. people in front of them. Yep. And so we're just going to have to be individually accountable and do it. Can we, can we talk to you about your son? And congratulations. I mean, what, what an awesome opportunity. Brady, uh, Brady Stevens is going to Notre Dame to play for Micah Shrewsbury. Congratulations. Yeah. Yes. Congratulations. Unbelievable. Yeah, he's going he's gonna to walk on. It's a really, it's an unbelievable school. It's where in the state that he's from, and he's super excited. And, you know, it's probably not for me to talk about. You know, it's, pro it's his life and, and what he wants. But um, I think we all just want to see our kids happy and, you know, pushed and challenged and grow and, and he, you know, thought about it and decided that's what he wanted to do. We're happy for him. How proud are you of him? Well, we're all, we're, we're, we're proud of them both. Yeah, but I just want him to be happy. That's all I really care about. Something tells me Micah's going to have him happy out there in Notre Dame. <laughs> I hope Micah chews his Zink. ass out. <laughs> and sends me the video. <laughs> well, Brad, thank you so much for your time. It's great to but see you But I do you want again. him happy. I, he'll just he'll be happy. Yeah, no. yeah. He'll be right. happy. All right, Brad, <laughs> thank you. All right, guys. Interested in becoming a Celtics season ticket member? Take the first step by joining the wait list. You'll get priority access to ticket plans when they become available. Visit Celtics.com slash waitlist to learn more. All right, we got one of our newest members of the team, Sfima Hyluk. He's on the set, and he's wearing what number, Eddie? 50, that big That's 50 right. over there. Did you get Five approval old. from Eddie House to wear that number? Yeah. No, he didn't. He don't have right to. He's, he's a Celtic. He he's a Celtic. He's just going to have to represent with it, though. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll say this. This is two men who could stroke it from downtown. So, so that passes on. That passes on. Hey, Sfi, what, what, welcome to town, obviously, first and foremost. But what made you choose the Boston Celtics? Uh, I feel like it's pretty obvious. One of the best teams in the NBA. I uh, have a really, really high expectation every year. And uh, for me personally, all I want to do is win. And I feel like here we got a great group of guys, uh, coaches, and just the whole organization. It's a big, uh, big chance for us to do something special. And I just want to be a part of something special. When Brad was calling you and talking to you and your agent about coming here, what was the discussion about what he wants to see out of you and how you can – he was just on set, obviously, and he, he said he wants the role players to accentuate the yeah. best players on the team. How do you accentuate those guys uh, from what he talked to you about? I feel like for me what I bring to a team is shooting, obviously, and, uh, you know, just help those guys uh, create more space for them to do, to do what they do. And uh, whenever I get a chance to shoot the ball, whenever I'm open, just uh, shoot and make the right play every time. Playmaker, too. 
Yeah, over, over those last couple of weeks of last season, you averaged about 20 points a game while shooting about 40% yeah. from the field and dishing out five assists per game. So this, this yeah, man can make plays for others, yeah, too. Yeah, he was balling. He so was balling. So coming in here, when, when you did pick the Celtics and you start, how do you vision yourself, like, helping the team? I know you said shooting, but there's other yeah. ways to affect the game. How do you see yourself fitting in with this core group? Yeah. Uh, obviously, uh, obviously uh, know my role and, uh, you know, come in, play hard, uh, play hard in defense, trying to uh, trying to make right play on defense and offense and, uh, you know, just be a, just be a good support to uh, all the guys there on the court and, uh, you know, just trying to do my best to fit in. You've played for a lot of different NBA teams and, and having to adjust and, and learn the players. How do you think that can better serve you now coming in and kind of trying to hit the ground running? Uh, I feel like the longer you be in the NBA, uh, the the faster you learn and uh, I feel like you know everybody because you play against everybody and uh, as me change a lot of teams I feel like I I know how it works now and uh, it wasn't really hard for me just to get in to get to know everybody because I knew some most of the guys before and uh, you know it just like made it easier for me all the all the guys been great to me all the coaches all the trainers so it's been it's been a great experience so far you got some history with one of the guys on the team right you were teammates with Al Horford oh, in sure, Oklahoma yeah, yeah. City what was that yeah. like what do you remember about being a teammate with Al out there obviously he wasn't playing much that season yeah. he was kind of getting ready for his return here but what do, what do you remember about being teammates with him uh, Great guy, super chill, uh, super professional. Uh, been in the league for a long, long, long time. Uh, Media day number yeah. 17 for him. Uh, <laughs> know how to win games. Uh, great player. So he's been, uh, he's been players to don't to get to know him there, and especially uh, you know get to hear and uh, have time with him here. Did you take anything from being around him during that time that you kind of applied to the way that you were working, kind of in all the work that you put in that the people don't see out there? Uh, just being professional. Yeah. That was the main thing. He was. Uh, you know, every day working is uh, not as he's like year 15, but he was preparing for every game. Like he gonna play like 30 minutes, 40 minutes. So uh, I feel like it just was good experience just to watch him how professional he is on the court and off the court. How has it been interacting with with Joe Missoula? Uh, it's been great. Uh, you know, just get get to know him. Uh, that's his second year as a coach, so it's, it's been uh, great to see him get on this level and uh, uh, succeed. From shooter to shooter, I ask everybody this. What's your spot on the court? <laughs> oh, uh, I love that question. I like elbows. See, every – let me drop the microphone. And walk out. <laughs> every shooter I ask, why do you got – ask me that question. What's spot on the court you like? When I walk in the gym. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Wherever I, I catch it at. I remember that. I remember that. Yeah, yeah. I catch it at. I'm a shooter. I'll start doing that. You're going to go walk back and tell Jason and Jalen that, right? Yeah. I love it. Eddie, yeah. What was your real spot on the court? Uh, I, I just told you. <laughs> I'm dead serious. I just told you. It didn't matter. Like if, but most of the time I ended up in the corner. So I took a lot of corner threes because just the way the offense flowed and rolled. I, so I ended up in the corner a lot, swing, swings, yeah. and knock it down. But it don't matter anywhere. Study in the gym. Film. I let that thing go. Yeah. <laughs> Studying yeah. film and seeing how this team plays. Where do you expect to get the majority of your shots? Working off of That's that. What he said. Yeah, everywhere. Same thing, right? <laughs> everywhere. You got to take that with you now. <laughs> Um, one thing I do want to ask is there, there's six guys on this roster or there's a lot of international flair. You're one of the six guys on this roster yeah. who were not born and raised in America. How do you think that that can actually contribute to a locker room and, and help? Uh, I feel like it gives a little different uh, uh, perspective and view. Uh, and, you know, like me, KP, uh, grew up in Europe, played in Europe for a little bit. And uh, I feel like we grew up playing a little different type of basketball. But then, uh, you know, he continued playing Europe. I went to college. So uh, it, it just brings a little diversity of the, the thinking of the game, I would say that. Well, we can't look forward to seeing you on the court with the Celtics Good anymore. Luck, we appreciate you coming in, man. Appreciate it, appreciate it. Man. Good luck. Rep that number 50. Yes. I know he's going to be watching you. We'll Stroke. Hey, anytime you walk into the court, that's your spot. Gotcha. For All sure. right, Speed, we appreciate that. I remember that. Uh, thank you very much, guys. Thank appreciate you. It. We appreciate, appreciate the time. Good luck. Check out the latest Celtics Talk podcast. Chris Forsberg has much more from Celtics Media Day. You can scan the QR code on the screen or find it on your favorite podcasting app or on YouTube. It's presented by 24autogroup.com, 11 locations across New England.
We got that fresh cut. What are we doing? Yeah, I got like one a month. <laughs> Man, <I'm> definitely <laughs> got to get it. Good definitely got to get it for me. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. What's up? How you doing? How was your time? Coming around. We are live with head coach. You're getting the full view Joe of media Mazzula. day. We're we're just catching up. Joe Mazula <laughs> joining us them, now. I need one of those sweatsuits. Uh, I was, <laughs> I was, I was You'd be a lot more comfortable in a suit. Reveal right? where I got it from. Yeah, I need I, one I of those. I got an idea where you got that from. <laughs> and a, you got that from Andy, and I need Andy to give me a box. Andy, <laughs> you need the hookup. You need the hookup. That's a public call out, Andy. <laughs> That's my guy. I love you. He but, takes care of me. Joe, great to see you. Thank yeah, you yeah. so much for joining us. Uh, let's just start with the the biggest news. Drew Holiday joining the Boston Celtics. How does he help elevate this team? Uh, just adds, char- adds more character to what we already have and adds mindset. Uh, just a level of toughness, a level of physicality. Uh, the reputation he brings on the defensive end of the floor is key. Uh, but we've had a lot of battles against him uh, in years past. And uh, he's made a lot of timely baskets. He's made a lot of plays on the offensive end. So uh, it's our job to fit him in. And it's his job to, to bring that character and mindset. And, um, you know, I think it'll be a great piece. Hey, is this the norm for you where, like, the, the couple days before camp starts, it's just everything changes? I mean, you, you're getting used to I'm it? I'm used to it, for sure, yeah. <laughs> but, but in reality, how, how does it – change what, what you're going to try to get the guys to do on the court when you add a guy like Drew Holiday and you lose a couple guys like Brogdon and Rob yeah. Williams. Obviously, Rob yeah. was kind of the anchor behind in the back line of the defense. Yeah, I mean, listen, like we talk about our defensive identity. We talk about um, our, our losses to our roster and our additions. But at the end of the day, every year you have to reinvent that identity. You have to recreate that identity. And so uh, with the roster that we have, d- defense has always been in the DNA here for the Celtics. We've been top five, top three uh, almost every year since I've been here uh, and even before my time. And so it's just recreating, rebranding what that looks like. Uh, you can be good on defense in many different ways. And it's a matter of how can we be good defensively uh, with our roster? How can we be flexible? Uh, how can we be a little bit adaptable to where we can go to some different packages, uh, some different layers of, of adjustments, some different layers there? Uh, and, you know, that'll just come from, from time, but it'll come from really the mindset of our team. What are the answers to those questions, at least, that you envision going in? Because we all know once you hit the court, you're going to see how things work and you're probably going to tweak things. But how do you envision those answers coming out as you go into camp? Yeah, I mean, I think the, 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 the first thing it starts with is like individual defense. Regardless of who's on your roster, regardless of anything, you can take pride in your individual defense. It's something we were great at two years ago. It's something that we weren't as good at last year. Mm-hmm. Something we want to get back to this year is like each individual guy taking a pride to guard the ball. Um, and I think it starts there. And then after that, you know, once each individual guy has that ownership and that accountability towards guarding their own man you can do you know pretty much anything um, but we have the ability to play small we have the ability to play big you know Chris Stapps will give us some more uh, some rim protection um, he's a little bit of a better defender than people think he is very underrated uh, and I think that'll take some pressure off of Al right and so I think it's just a matter of starting with that individual piece I was joking on the press conference like there were times last year where I didn't do a great you were job joking with the media I never do that <laughs> I know right I, I, I won't do it this year I promise no come on you have to I, I, <laughs> that's dry humor that's dry humor um, um, but I, I think one of the things that I learned as a, as a coach was like, you are, you emphasize. And like for me personally, I was messing around. Like, no one had to emphasize defense to me because I was so bad on offense. <laughs> Um, and so I just assume that people play defense. But I'm coaching a bunch of guys that are way better at offense than I am. So I just got to remind them from time to time. And so defense has always been in my DNA. It's been in ours. It's just about getting back to emphasizing. It's just about making it the most important thing. And I think our guys are ready to take that on. And, and you talked about it. The, the defense, to me, that was the one thing that stood out with the trade for Drew Holiday is the fact that now is – you have so much defensive versatility, so many guys that can guard their own yard. Now, is on the perimeter, you got Jalen and Jason. They all express that they both express they want to be all NBA defense, right? We already know that Derek White is on that level, and we know Drew Holiday is. You guys have all that mixed up there. But I think the one thing that I really was excited about, and I dropped the F-bomb on the plane when I seen the, the trade. On I the dropped bottom, those all the time. Hey, on the bottom line, did you do a backflip after you got the trade? Guy, you had to be super excited. I didn't, but I, I just – my way of excitement is, like, I get angry and, like, anxious. and like. So did you go to the right gym now. and slam somebody? I did, like, a couple hundred push-ups. I got a workout in, but it's like we should be practicing right now. I'm, I'm right? glad. not be waiting until Tuesday. I'm glad you weren't playing pickup like, ball. Check ball right now. But I, I'd like the, the fact that – 
I, I feel like the first time, and this is no slight to nobody that, that had played here before, I just feel like the first time we have an organizer at the point guard position with Drew Holiday, when things get a little uh, when it murky, the, the water's get muddy a little bit, and guys start mucking the game up, he's been in every situation, and he could calm the guys down, get guys organized, and also get Jason and Jalen the ball in scoring position with a live dribble. To me, that, that was one of the things I got really excited about when I seen it. And when I heard he went to Portland, I know he wasn't staying there, and I was yeah, like, yeah. we got to get him somehow, and if we do, I think that changes the landscape of the NBA as well. So I know you have to be extremely excited about not only the defensive versatility that you guys are going to be able to bring to the table, but also the offensive versatility oh, yeah. that everybody has. And that point guard role is with Derek as well, right? Yeah. Like I think, you know, Derek is one of those guys where he's always under the radar because of just how he carries himself. And, like, from the day we traded for him, he's gotten better, better, and mm -hmm. better on both ends of the floor. And, you know, it's hard coming into our defensive system uh, because we switch more, because you're in much more guard your yard situations. And he came from San Antonio where they didn't switch as much initially, but his development over the last year and a half has, has really been big for us, and so, uh, you know, he'll be doing some of the point guard duties as well, and it's important that, like, the addition of one player doesn't take away from another player. Mm -hmm. like, that can't happen. Like, we have to get the best out of everybody, but at the same time, everyone's going to have to be willing to sacrifice, but the one area that no one's talking about is I'm really excited about is our second unit, our third unit, like the, the guys like Peyton and Sam mm -hmm. and Brissett and Luke and, and uh, Jordan Walsh, like those guys, like, last year our second and third unit won us games. And they have to be able to bring that mindset and that intensity and that level of basketball. And, um, you know, those guys start with Peyton. Like, I'm excited for him. I think this opportunity uh, is going to be big for him. And we're going to rely on his mentality, his mindset to bring that same defensive and that toughness. Yeah, he's a dog defense. on the defense. He's a dog. He'll pick he's up 94 feet. He's not scared yeah, of any yeah. moment. One of my favorite players all the time. I tell him that all the time. Um, but about Jordan Walsh, right? You spoke on Jordan Walsh. Talk a little bit about what you're excited about with him and coaching him and helping him develop. He showed great flashes and good signs of being a really good player. What is he going to bring to this team, and what are you excited about coaching? I'm more excited about getting him into an organization, getting him into where there's, a, there's direction, there's an identity, and it's like there's no rush here. Like, you have time to become this. And you're not being judged by how you handle preseason game number three or how you handle the minutes that you get. Or you're not being judged by how you, when you get assigned to the G League or not. Like, you're being judged by how you approach the, every single day, how you get better. And can you get better at certain things? Can you fill a role? You know how it is. Like, when guys come into the NBA, they're used to doing one thing in college, but they're asked to do something completely And you different. have to change or you'll and be so out you the league. you have to change. And so can you just work? Can you be open-minded to, to developing the role that is needed for you to help us whenever that? situation comes we can, You're, go ahead oh I was just gonna say heading into your second season now does it feel different for you at all or are you treating this year kind of as your year one uh, definitely like treating it as a year one you know I think last year was a was a cheat code in some ways because we were able to go through it we were able to be somewhat successful and we were able to collect a lot of data and then we were able to use this offseason to really just go back and say okay like what worked what didn't where can we get better what has to stay the same because it's it's very easy when you don't achieve the main goal of winning a championship to say you have to change everything. But we did a lot, a lot of really good things on both ends of the floor and as an organization. And so we can't come in and have overhaul changes. We have to stick to those things. And then we just got to be open-minded and flexible to the things that we can grow at and get better to, you know, to put us in position. We can't let you get out of here without talking about Christos Porzingis. It's a seven-foot-three addition. Yeah. Um, we gave our take at the, at the top what of the show. What was it? I'd love to hear it. Well, I said that I think it's going to really affect you guys in crunch time. Uh, it's, Positively it's gonna, or negatively? Positive. 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 My yes. friend, positive. We positive on this show. <laughs> glass, half, glass half full. <laughs> on this show, glass, half, glass is half full. <laughs> But, no, I, I think that he's going to give you guys an element that you just did not have uh, offensively when you're looking to try to put the ball through the basket in crunch time of big games. How do you see him impacting what you guys are trying to accomplish? So when you look at offenses, and, and really when you look at the game in, in, in the fourth quarter and you look at the game in the playoffs, it's essentially the same thing. And, you know, we've never had – we've had great players. We've had great – we've had great – stuff here but we haven't had the ability to change the dynamic of offense late in games mm -hmm. with this, whether it's with post-ups whether it's with nail isos on, on mismatches and so the addition of him allows one the matchups to be a little bit differently late game and two allows us to change our play call frequency to get those hard twos mm -hmm. to get to the free throw line uh, to get Jason and Jalen open catch and shoot threes because Chris Stapps is posting a smaller guy and so it really just comes down to can we organize our spacing can we fight for space uh, 
um, and really get those free throw line opportunities, get those hard twos. And I think that will change the dynamic of our late game offensive package. Um, but at the same time, he's going to have to help change our defensive identity there. And our first shot defense in the fourth quarter in late games is really good. Our defensive rebounding has not been. And so we have to finish possessions um, with defensive rebounding. From serious to not serious, right? <laughs> <laughs> Are we going to toss to something here? Yes, yeah. We wanted. I know that you had a, a busy off season that includes taking in oh, uh, Marcus Smart's wedding. Uh, whose idea I mean, you knew was this? this? Was I got up. something for him. I got something post. for him. I was told specifically that let's take a funny. Let's, we took a serious one before, and then he's like, let's be let's be funny. It this won't isn't get a out. serious one. That's not. No, that was one. that was be funny, and it won't get out. It was. He fell for the banana in the tailpipe. That's what happened. Yes. Wait, Jason said it won't get out. I'm not gonna tell you who said that. All I'm gonna say is I was told to be funny, and it won't get out. The banana in the tailpipe. You already happens, know that's right? what they're gonna do. I thought you looked great, but I gotta say I think Brad won the. He won the picture. Of course, he always does. Brad, Brad <laughs> won the picture. All right, Joe. We appreciate you coming by. Good luck right, this season. Good luck, Coach. Thank, Thank you very much. Thank Great you. Can't wait see to you see again. you guys tomorrow. Let's see it. All right. Appreciate it. Now there's a new way to stay in the game. Sign up to receive text messages from the Boston Celtics and be the first to know about new offers, content, sweepstakes, and more. Visit Celtics.com slash text to opt in. And we're live. How about that? We got Ashley Battle <laughs> hanging out on set. Oh, how was the off season for you? Off season was great. What's up, P? What up, what up? Let me let you go do your thing. Uh, yes, we are. You sure? We got what another senior. Ashley's stealing what up, what up? Stealing That's the my spotlight. guy. <laughs> oh, shit, I'm about to tear the table We got up. Eddie breaking the table. <laughs> WWE Ashley style. Video I, mean, I got excited. My boy is in the building, man. We are my live. Um, Peyton, the great chaos to see you. I first off have to say congratulations on your engagement. Oh, thank you. Oh, yeah, congratulations. That's amazing. Congrats. Appreciate it. Pictures. Even though, awesome. hey, look, I said congratulations on the bot. He didn't even like my my comment or nothing. They, they just played me to the left like one of the other million people that follow him. <laughs> That's on me. <laughs> Uh, Peyton, we're going into the season. We just had some chaos yesterday, right? Sure. Another big trade. And I cannot wait to see the trio of you, Drew, and Derek rotating at that guard spot. How do you think you guys are going to complement each other out there this season? I think we'll be, uh, you know, really good. But I think um, all of us have, you know, different – different things I'm a little bit more like pesty you know they're bigger so I think we bring a, di a different element all three of us which you know obviously they're tremendous players and I think we can you know it just helps to add different flavors to it and last season obviously it came out you, you wanted to play right and if it wasn't going to be here you wanted to be somewhere else well Brad would not let you go it's mm -hmm. like he does not want you to be on another team he cleared open a spot for you to get playing time how do you interpret that and his belief in you uh, it means a lot, but for me, I just handle what I can handle, and that's showing up every day, putting in my work, you know, and being ready for those opportunities when they come. So, uh, like I said all along, you know, my, I love basketball, and the only thing I want to do is hoop and compete. And so that was the, the whole thing the whole time. So, for me, I'm just looking forward to the opportunity going out there and, you know, trying to win games and trying to do something special and, and bring it every time I step on that court. How did your summer go? Like how just some grassy. Then you have 80, 80 some. Uh, then you have 80 one. What was it? This time, what you right? end up with in that? Wait, where's that summer league? Is that in Portland or the, that? It, that one was in Vancouver, Canada. It was okay. like a thing we popped in for. Uh, but no, it was good though. I mean, I, I put in a lot of work this summer. So what specifically know. were you working on? Uh, what areas of the game did you work on? And what there did you study go. a lot? We got some footage. Uh, Proof. I mean, honestly, you know, with who we have on our team, me being a very dynamic off ball too. You know, being able to you know run off screens and stuff like that. I mean, obviously, I can, you know, handle the rock and do things like that, but to, to I think to elevate my game is expanding it off ball and, like, in those areas. And I'm not comparing myself to Anobi, but you see how Steph and those guys, how they get shots, they create shots mm -hmm. with not even having the ball in their hands. So, for me, I, I'm able to catch and shoot. So, that's a big area I've proved on. But really, like, I got stronger and faster. So, um, you know, I'm going to be pushing in transition and stuff like that. And so, I'm just ready to show – 
show all that. And defensively, I'm sorry. And defensively, you were talking about y'all's different the way you guys different flavors, right? You guys yeah. bring something different. Your 94 feet pickup. For sure. Is that Love something it. that you're going to engage every uh, single game? I mean, 100. percent yeah. I, I think it's just something I do just to get warm. You know, you <laughs> check it. Well, you, I mean, I continue it, but like when you check in the game, you know, it's, you, you get pick up 94, you you pick you get warm real quick. So, right. but for me, I think that's just a way I can put my imprint on the game and you know being uh, a pass out there and picking people up and you know tiring right out the other yeah. guard and stuff like that. So, when I got, you were in Vancouver. You you played with Isaiah Thomas, mm -hmm. correct? We, I think we got a photo of you guys um, hanging out. But uh, how was that playing with IT and, and maybe what? Uh, it, was, it was amazing. I mean, you know, obviously me being from the Pacific Northwest and like, you know, he's a legend out there. He's a legend here. And like the things he was able to accomplish are unbelievable. So, you know, somebody definitely I admire and uh, like, you know, I look up to his game and, you know, it's just amazing what he did. So. And he showed so much love. He showed love all For the sure. time. IT is yes. uh, yeah. one of the best Boston dudes. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. Showed nothing but love um, to all the Unbelievable dude. Too. Yeah. yeah. For sure. I got to follow up on you mentioned Steph earlier. Who, When you're talking about playing off the ball, who else are you studying on a daily basis? Because I know you're a student of the game. I mean, really, I study everybody. I mean, I think you could take something from everybody. And it doesn't matter if it's even your position. It's just like there's bigs in the league, there's wings in the league, there's some, certain things they do. There's You can always add to your game. So for me, I'm, you know, I try to take that growth mindset as far as like, you know, there's always things I can get better at. And that just keeps elevating my game to, to another level each, each year. So what was your reaction yesterday when you heard the news? I the mean, day before yeah. training camp starts, by the way. I mean, it's, it's like any time you get teammates to get traded, that's, yeah. you know, obviously it's tough. And, you know, you build bonds and relationships with guys. And, you know, you've been through it. It's, yeah. it's not easy. Um, but it's part of the business. And, you know, obviously we got a Drew, who's an unbelievable player. And somebody's going to really help us win. Uh, at a high level, so but I'm I'm also looking forward to that too and learning from him and you know everything he's accomplished and just I get to study from him a little bit. He's a champion for sure, right? He's got that DNA. You said that you've been able to be working out with the guys and pretty much everyone's been here early. What have you seen just from the sense of urgency from this Celtics team getting in and and getting into the, into the gym? Uh, you know, just a. I think everybody's just locked in earlier this year. Um, you know, people are coming in, we're like bonding with each other, learning how to play together, stuff like that. But I don't know if I'd say it's a sense of urgency, it's just people are ready for the moment and ready for this opportunity to come. So, so was it last year, you know, with everything that was going on, the EMA situation and, and Joe being thrusted into the head mm -hmm. coach and so much chaos right before media day, right? So it's two big bombs, right? But last year it was that. This year it's, a, a, it's something that's very positive for the team. When you found out that he was getting traded and everybody, you, did you guys call each other? Did you guys get on the group chat like, oh, it, it's, it's going down? And also, is it a different energy that you guys have coming into this camp than it was last year? I think it's definitely a different energy. I mean, we're coming off of like a championship run the year before, going to the championship. So uh, we already had that in our heads. We we're going to go back. And then obviously, you know, new, new coach. Like there was a lot of things going on. And so players' heads is all different places. And we, you know, I'll, I don't know, it's just a lot. But this year, I just think guys are more locked in, ready just to get ready to play games. Like, we're only mm -hmm. focused on the basketball side of things. We don't have the distractions outside of just ball. So I think that's important to us, and we can just all lock in now. Right on. Well, Peyton, thank you so I much for your time. Great to thank see you. We'll see you, you tomorrow. You. <laughs> Start of training camp. The Celtics play their first preseason game on Sunday when they host the 76ers. Our coverage starts at 5.30 p.m. with Celtics pregame live. It's presented by TD Bank. I just enjoy playing, and I enjoy trying to win, and I enjoy playing with guys, especially the guys on this team. And whether I'm playing five minutes or 20 minutes or zero minutes, like, I don't really care as long as, like, we are moving and trying to, like, all push in the same direction. Reverse. Oh, good block by Cornet. Timed it up perfectly. Oh, Cornet! <laughs> That's right. I truly don't care like anymore about like the personal side of things, and like I take so much more joy in like us all like working towards it together.
I feel like throughout college and early on in my career, I was like so like hyper focused. Whereas I feel like the last two years, I've actually come to like having a lot more peace of like knowing what those routines and habits are. Like you just kind of know the routine and you know the work that it takes. In a weird way, like letting go of knowing like I can just control what I can control of my preparation. Be ready to be able to play like whatever the role is kind of asked for. I really do like care about and like love every person on our team and in our organization. <laughs> and that they are like unique and have different gifts to bring. It is actually fun to like come in and get to like work with them and spend time with them. Like I just care a lot about like our, everyone here I think like for who they are that's completely not tied to like what they are as basketball players or coaches or anything like that. The performance is already so like weighted and criticized and all that kind of stuff already. I kind of hope everyone can know that like I really just care about us all going and like playing together and trying to figure out whatever the best version of like our team can be as we are. Like it doesn't really matter about like where other teams are or what other people want of us. It's like all that matters is kind of where we're at and like what we can do to just be a little bit better together. Actually funny, I remember when I was first in New York, Boston was a place that like felt like significant to me and a place I like always thought would be awesome to play at. And then when we were in New York and Boston was like really good and playing against them and I was just like, man, I'm not sure if I'll ever be able to be at a place where I'd be able to like really just contribute on a team that's like like this, that's like really trying to win and contend for a championship. And then it's funny where now like I am asked to like to play and contribute on a team that like we are hoping to win a championship. It seems like Quite frankly, like unbelievable. Oh, oh nice show. Good defense by Cornette. Got the block. I'll throw it up. Big fella. Yes. A little mixtape by Luke Cornette. Extra value is what you get when you find Luke Cornette. Just taking responsibility for like where you are and accepting that and like controlling what you can and committing to that. Then when you are moved in the opportunity, you can actually like take it for what it is instead of like still thinking, oh, I need something else to be peaceful or to be like happier or like whatever those types of things are. I'm really appreciative to be able to be here in Boston and it does feel like you're a part of something like just bigger than yourself. Well, we have Sam Hauser joining us now. Sam, a busy off season for you. Congratulations on getting married. Congrats. It looked like Congratulations. it was a yeah, lot of fun. That, yeah. We just went from one guy who got engaged to one guy yeah, who got married. Yeah, you're going to have to give that? Peyton some pointers. Then He's been he asking. Any, I've been yeah? giving okay. little helpful tricks and trade. Just say yes. Really. Yeah. That's what you got to yes. do, yeah. right? That's it. So, you know, it was a great summer. We had a great time. The, the, the wedding went well, and the honeymoon was even better. So, yeah. it was great. Well, it looked like a lot of the guys had fun dancing at the, at the <laughs> oh, wedding. Yeah, we got that. some stuff from Luke Cornett. We got to ask him about his dance oh, moves, but baby. was he? he's pretty skilled on the dance floor, right? He may or might, may not have done a cornet contest <laughs> Look at this photo. on the dance floor. <laughs> you know look we at did. this photo. <laughs> Sweaty Luke Cornet. completely Cornette. drenched. Hey, man, we're having a good time. I'm glad, the, I'm glad they let loose a little look, bit. You guys you know? got headbands on. Look at that. <laughs> <laughs> Can you please tell me, because I will never know this, what is it like having Luke Cornet at your wedding? It was it was great. Yeah, he was a lot of fun, good energy. He seemed to have some gravity about him and just <laughs> People just flocked to him, so it was uh, it was pretty fun. That to sounds have like there, Luke yeah. Cornette. That sounds yeah, yeah. like Luke Cornette. So it was great. Hey, listen, bus one's gonna look a little different this year, huh? Yeah. I, that was a sad face that just dropped upon you in we, the moment, but we may have lost the captain, you know. Yeah. So, but uh, we're gonna me, Peyton, Luke, we'll, we'll carry it on. <laughs> it, it won't get lost. So, how do you adjust? Who else do you think's gonna be in the crew this year? You know, time will tell. We'll see. Uh, you know, you, there's no open invitation. You kind of have to earn it. You know, you yeah. got to be consistent. There's an initiative. It's, like it's a fraternity, right? It's like yeah. a fraternity. Yeah, yeah. exactly. So you, um, we'll see. Time will tell. Is is Luke gonna come up with the new Bus One Boys song, or do you think that's? If he can come up with the sequel to that song, yeah. I, it'd be impressive. But I don't know if he can. That's we we wanted to send it out publicly, but we couldn't because there's copyright.
reiterate the concerns. <sighs> it's unfortunate. Yeah, well, we I can know. get a hold of that band and yeah. just say. Maybe. That's got to come out of your guys' paycheck, not mine. <laughs> Let's get to some basketball. How excited are you about, especially after the news yesterday? You know, it's always tough when teammates get traded. You know, three teammates got traded. You know, guys that have been here for a long time. Um, so that's the tough part of the business. But getting a guy like Drew Holiday, how exciting were how excited were you when you found that news out and how excited are you about this upcoming season? Yeah. Yes, yeah, so, I mean to your point, it's the toughest part of the business is losing, you know, you build friendships and relationships with, with these guys. So um, thanks to Marcus, Grant, Rob, and Malcolm for all they did for us for the last couple of years so uh, that I've been here at least. But it's exciting to get Drew here. Um, championship DNA, you know, he got a ring with uh, Milwaukee. Um, he's tenacious on defense. I think he's really going to fit well with what we do offensively as too. So um, we're really excited to have him. And um, yeah. Why do you think he's going to fit well with what you guys do offensively? You know, I, I think he played really well uh, with the Bucks. Um, maybe not as like the, the second option, but as like the third option with uh, Middleton and, and Giannis. And I think he provided a calming presence out there with them. And I think he's going to bring that to us, um, making winning plays, making tough buckets when we need them, uh, getting stops on defense. Um, that's kind of what he's known for. So, you know, he's one of the best in the league at that. So I think it's going to be a seamless transition. We talk about Drew there. We're going to talk about Sam now. All right. We, we've seen your growth and ascension since you got here, obviously starting with the G League team coming up here. And then last year, I think you played in about 80 games last year, right? So <laughs> it's, it's quite the growth process that you've gone through. But what's the next step in your development that we need to see this year or we will see this year? Yeah, I mean, honestly, just like, just getting better all, all around as a player. Um, I think there's room for improvement in a lot of areas. And that, that's like any player. I feel like you can never not be getting better at basketball. I think there's so many aspects to it that you can get better at. So, uh, you know, I worked really hard this offseason uh, to get better. And I'm excited to show it here and coming up in a week. Specifically, what were you working on to get better? Yeah, I mean, building off of defense, um, I do need to get better in isolation situations. I think I did show. Come on. I, I showed growth last year. The first led, half of the year it was led the work league in progress, in defensive though. rating, my friend. Well, so what do you think that that your, your issue was? Was it what, what you were working on? How do you get better in, in that? In your one-on-one -on -one defense, besides watching film and preparation, what did, how did, what did you do to work on that? Yeah, so – um, you know, I had a tendency to kind of like I had like happy feet almost. Mm. So I think just like quieting my feet down, uh, especially when guys are getting into multiple moves and changing directions. So quieting my feet down, giving myself a better chance to stay in front. And then offensively, really just being more aggressive and um, taking shots that maybe I would have passed up last year. I think that's a big thing and in, in, um, expanding my game as well. It, you know, obviously a three pointer is kind of where it starts, but. You know, I'm able to do other things as well, you know, playing in DHO or a ball screen situation, you know, getting downhill, making the right play, the, either it's a pass or a finish or something like that. So I think just just expanding my game a little bit. We just had Peyton on and he said kind of the guys, he feels that they're they're locked in. You guys are ready to work. I know you guys have been here early getting ready. What have you seen from the group? Yeah, I mean. Joe, you know, he was happy to see, like, all of us in the gym a couple of weeks before training camp, which is, I don't know if it's a common thing around the NBA. It might be, but um, the competitive level, the competitiveness level when everybody was back has been at a different level um, in my time in Boston. So it's been pretty special to have everyone around and building, building chemistry early. And I think everyone's just ready to get going. Anyone in particular that's kind of set that tone of competitiveness? I th honestly, I think it started from the jump. Like uh, there was young guys in early, early August. Um, me and Peyton came in mid-August, um, and then guys have been trickling in uh, every week. So I think everyone who's been there has maintained it and even raised the level. And, and I think when Jason Jalen got back, those guys are able to bring up the level of intensity and competitiveness um, just by them being there. So I think that's good for everyone. How are you seeing them already kind of lay that foundation? Just their daily work, their daily work habits. Uh, they show up, they're professional, they get their work in. Um, you know, they test others, you know. They, they try to get others out of their uh, comfort zone, I guess, which is good for a player. And 
that only gets you better. So iron sharpen iron. We all know that Joe from the offensive side, he really emphasizes the three point line. And all Brad did this offseason was add a ton more three point <laughs> shooting to what was already here. You guys, I mean, it's across the board, really. Almost every player that's going to be in the rotation can really shoot it from downtown. What do you expect the, the post practice? competitions are going to be like this season. Yeah, it's, it's probably going to be uh, very competitive. Some <laughs> shooting drills, it sounds like. Uh, but, no, I think it was great. We obviously added some pieces that are definitely going to help what we were trying to do. And um, time will tell throughout the season, you know. But uh, I think it's going to be a really, really fun season. But for, for you in particular, I did want to ask, like, there, there's competition there for you to get those minutes. You've been in that situation before. You earned them last season. You've got Spee that coming in this yeah. year, a lot of similar skill set to you. Like, why do you embrace that coming to you, that, that you've got to battle and earn this? I mean, it's just kind of, like, been my whole life. Uh, real real blue-collar family. Um, parents worked really hard to get to where they're at now. and. You know, just seeing that as a young kid, you know, and now it's now it's my profession. You know, they did that in their profession. Now it's my turn to, you know, put the work in and, and really earn everything you can get. So because nothing's nothing's given in this league for sure. So I think every day is a constant battle. So who would you say is the best shooter on the team? Because we got That's a lot a of guys question. that can stroke that thing. Me. Okay. Yeah, I mean. That wasn't the question, though. <laughs> You're a great shooter. Where's your spot? Anywhere on the court. Yes. <laughs> That's my guy. That's what I'm talking about. I learned. I learned from last year. Svee yep. failed that question about a half hour ago. So. Well, now Pass. he knows. Now he knows. Yes. Uh, but speaking of anywhere on the court when you walk in the gym, last couple games last season, you, you came out and you played at a really high level. I mean, what was the rhythm that you were in at that time? And you talked about doing things other than just shooting. You showed it during those couple games. Yeah, I mean, you know, some guys weren't playing, which provided opportunities for uh, guys like me and Peyton and, and Luke to play more minutes and, and kind of take on a little bit of that load so I think it was you know that provides a little bit of confidence uh, to do more of what you know what to do so I think that played into it and just just really just enjoying the game and being present being, being where my feet were and just you know having fun out there That's, I think that plays a big part of it too. Uh, last one before before we let you go. I know you worked on your game this this off season. What about your golf game? <laughs> How much golf did you get in? <laughs> I played a lot before the wedding, and then ever since the wedding happened, it's maybe yeah, I think I played two or three times. So well, you had your priorities straight then, right? <laughs> but leading up to the wedding, it was on a good trajectory, I will say. How many times a week were you playing? Probably probably three. Wow. Yeah, yeah. It's a lot of golf. It was good. What was your best score? This year, I think I shot a – my best score this year was like 75. So nice. That's pretty good. Yeah. Nice. It's about 25 strokes better than me. <laughs> <laughs> well, Sam, thank you so much. Thanks we for appreciate, having me. It. appreciate it. Good luck. Take your game night experience to the next level. Book a Celtics suite for the best views, service, and amenities. Visit Celtics.com slash suites to learn more. All right, we have Al Horford joining us now. And Al, a lot's happened <laughs> this offseason for the Celtics, and especially in the last 24 hours acquiring Drew Holiday. How has the team responded to that? Maybe how did you respond when you saw the news? I'm shocked, um, you know, with a uh, very surprise, still trying to, uh, you know, wrap, every, wrap my head around it. And, um, uh, but, you know, now, you know, it's here. You know, we start tomorrow and uh, trying to have that mindset of thinking about tomorrow mm -hmm. and getting practice started. When that was happening, though, are you guys are you guys texting each other, um, you know, in real time, reacting to it? Or were you reaching out to guys on the team? Um, yeah, I reached out to a couple of the guys um, and, uh, you know, just, you know, just surprised about it and, you um, uh, it, it, it's one of those things that you think you have everything kind of put together and then, you know, this happens. But, um, uh, 
at the same time, we're you know we're excited to have Drew here. Um, you know, Drew's a very special player, and um, uh, looking forward to developing chemistry with him. And touching on that, I mean, how important from your perspective is it that this got done yesterday and not a couple days into camp? You guys are able to start camp as a group. Yeah, that, it's very important. Um, you know, it's just it's tough in the position that some of the guys are in. Like I feel like I was talking to somebody and I was like, man, like I wish, you know, like there's like a trade deadline in the mid middle of the season. Like there should be something like <laughs> for that the here for, for a lot of the guys just because, uh, you know, a lot of the guys have families, they have kids, you know, they have to get situated, things like that. Now they're up in the air scrambling and um, it, it's just it's a, it's a hard reality, but it's something the NBA is going to have to look at at some point just to, to help the players be in the best posi position that they can. But for us, I'm glad at least it happened, you know, now and uh, tomorrow we can come in and we can start, you know, fresh, start out right and uh, start building this thing back up. The toughest part of this business is that part, is the trades and the relationships and the bonds you build with your brothers that you've been in the trenches with, that you broke bread with on the road, you know their families, you might go to their weddings and things like that. But once that gets out the way, right, like you said, tomorrow it starts. And the unit that you guys have right now, the team that you guys have assembled right now, how excited are, are you about your defensive versatility, your offensive versatility, you guys' depth? How excited about you are you about going into this season compared to last season of, okay, you've got a brand new coach now, your coach has been here a year. Now you have everything. It seems like the gumbo pot is coming together. <laughs> I think you hit it, man. I think that it is coming together for us. Um, everything is in the right place. Uh, I I'm really excited. Um, you know, I'm really excited about the potential of this group. Um, already all September, most of us have been in here every day, you know, putting in the work, um, pushing each other, trying to be better. Um, so I feel like with Coach, second year with us, be more comfortable and everything. And and with us, we have some stability in that regard. So uh, I, I feel pretty good of, of where we're at and what we can be as a group. I would presume that throughout the month of September, one of the players you've been watching in the gym is Christoph Porzingis. Um, obviously, you're both bigs. I'm sure you spent some time around each other. What's your takeaway from being around him a little bit? And how do you think you guys are going to be able to play off each other? It's, it's been great. Kristaps, uh, uh, we We've gotten a few good good weeks in uh, working together, but he, uh, uh, you know, great attitude, great work ethic, um, knows how to play the game, and uh, it's just impressive watching him. Honestly, just watching him. I know I've played against him for a lot of years, but seeing him, you know, finish at the rim, um, shooting it the way that he shoots it. He, I mean, he's shooting it. I feel like he's shooting it's it down. <laughs> you know, so big, like right? it's like he's so tall, and like he's really he he's really seven three. Like yeah. you know, like it's, it's no maybe a little. <laughs> taller than that like don't don't tell him I said that but um but man he he's he's somebody that Celtics fans should be very excited about because uh, you know I, I think I don't think people understand you know how good of a player you know he is Joe touched on it when he was on set about how Chris Stops's presence is going to really help you guys in crunch time particularly in the postseason where you've just got that added element that you didn't necessarily have uh, of the big who can roll. He can shoot threes. He can post up. He shot 61% on post ups last season, second in the league. H how do you see him being able to affect what you guys are doing in crunch time of big games? Yeah, I just think he's going to impact uh, winning for us. Uh, and, and I think he understands that. He's in the point in his career that I feel like he's embracing this opportunity and, um, and, and, and he's ready for it. So uh, I'm just really excited for our group. And for us, the work starts now. Uh, you know, Eddie knows is like building this chemistry, you know, the day to day aspect of it. That's what we're focused in right now. And, and you know, the results will come later. But uh, I'm just excited for us to get in the in the gym together. Let me ask you, how, how do you feel? You're going into 17, right? Mm -hmm. Well, you were a rookie when we played you in 08 in the playoffs yeah. the, <laughs> when you guys were giving us fits. But now you're in 17. How are you feeling all the yeah. way around your body, your mind, everything from just say five years ago, your mindset from five years ago? your body to right now. How are you feeling? Man, I feel you look great. great, by the way. Yeah, no, I appreciate it. I feel, no, I feel, I, I feel, the band doesn't age. <laughs> <laughs> nah, I feel great. Uh, I've, I've really put in, you know, the work. I understand that I have to, you know, push myself even more to be in the
the positions that I want to be in. Um, but, you know, our staff, our group has been great with me, uh, making sure that, you know, that, that I'm in, in the best place that I, that I can be. And all summer, you know, we were putting in the work, um, you know, getting after it. So I feel really good. I, I know what the season embarks. I know what it takes, and, and I'm, I'm ready for it. And besides winning the championship, besides winning the championship, I know that's like the mo most motivating thing, right? That's the thing, that, the, the fire that's underneath you. But those days, you know what I'm talking about? It's 17 now. You know, I, I played 11, so you have those days where it's a little mundane, it's a little bit monotonous. How do you it motivate sounds like yourself? Sounds February and What March. kind of games do you play? Because you have to do it when you get to a certain spot in your career because you've seen it all. What kind of games do you play with yourself to motivate yourself, the inner motivation? Yeah, no question about it. For me, I, I look around and and I'm looking at the at the guys next to me. You know, I'm, I'm looking I'm looking at the guys next to me, and I'm like, you know, I got to make sure that I'm the best that I can. You know, for my teammates, what do I need to do? And and just really, for me, I I, I really seize this opportunity. You know, being a Celtic, being here, having this opportunity, like those are the things that kind of motivate me and drive me. And uh, and looking at it, you know, there's not a lot of us that are 15 plus, you know, in this league. You know what I mean? So that's motivation for me and, and it's something I'm trying to set an example I'm trying to you know do that so like those are the things that kind of drive me and keep me going to, to be the best that I can. With setting an example Jordan Walsh said that you have taken him under your wing and just been helping him offering him advice what have you been kind of saying to him and, and describe that relationship? Uh, yeah I mean jo Jordan is he's, he's a great guy um, you know so I, with him you know I'm just trying to help him in any way that I can to make that transition easier for him. He's coming into a contending team and, and for him, and I told him from the beginning, it's like you just want to have an impact any way that you can and you want to be professional, you want to stay ready. And he's already way ahead of it. Uh, he, he's been here since August. You know, he's been putting in the work, he's been putting in the time and, uh, and he's, he's going to have to learn as he goes. Like, you know, you can only say so much and, but, you know, the person has to live through it. And, uh, and, but I think he's in a great place. He's in a great position right now, and uh, and I'm, I'm looking forward to watching him grow over the years. He said he was. You were giving him fashion tips. Oh yeah, for the guy. I, I, I question you, that. You need, I you, question he that. Said, so basically, he's saying he don't like your swag. That's what he's saying on the under. No, That's what he's I, saying without I, saying. I, it. I Trust think me. you're you're a conservative dresser, right? There's some yeah. other people out there who are a little bit more flashy, flashy. and flashy. flashy. Right? They are. They are. I mean, and I, for a you got to take the roof to go guy. buy him some, man. You the OG vet. You got to take go, go get him something fresh but, for the gal. But that's gallery. what I'm saying. Like, yeah, like you know, like at the end of the day, I am the the OG as you want to say it. But I mean, I still. Like when, when you come to to the gala, for example, you know I'm the best dressed there every year. Oh, he like, told. You know, hey, that's that's just to how it is. Camera. We, we gotta put to that out there. Like, <laughs> nothing, you know what I'm saying? We like, it's have just but a camera to you see know, y'all swag. Yeah, <laughs> like, that, that's just that. how it is. So you know, I'm, I'm giving him some t like you know some pointers. So he'll he'll be he'll be looking sharp uh, when the gala comes on the fifth. <laughs> One last question for you before we let you go, and it ties into this. You've been doing this for 17 years now. You're willing to take the rookies under your wing. You signed up for doing that two more times this offseason. You signed an extension with the team. Why two more years? Uh, I think that's the longest they can give me. <laughs> you know, honestly, at, at this stage, I mean. He wanted 10. Are you trying to get 20? Are you trying to get 20 in? There's is, that, not, is that a goal? So there's not really a number. Like, okay. When I got into, into this, like, it's just, you know, I, I look at it, and I'm like, man, so you're 17 for me. Like, I can't believe it. Like, you know, I, 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 me and my wife talk about it. We laugh. And um, so it's, it's not really no number. But if they could have given me a, a four-year extension, <laughs> I, I, I would have took that. Yeah, you know what I mean? That, that's, that's what it is. After, the band's got to eat. Are you going to look at Because that'll take you to 19, correct? Mm -hmm. or are you going to be like, hey, man, I'm trying to get this 20 in? You know, that's that's man. a special number, actually. So maybe so people did it. Yeah, I mean, may, maybe. I mean, you know, we'll, we'll kind of see how it is. But I do, I do feel pretty good, and and the way that, you know, I'm, I'm committed to taking care of myself. I'm enjoying this journey. I'm enjoying the moment. And and for me right now, I just want to, you know, I'm trying to bottle all this up right now because you don't you don't get these opportunities very often. No, you don't. And the group that we have right here, uh, I feel like has a chance to be very special. No doubt. So, good luck, man. Yeah, appreciate yeah. Al, you. Thank Michelle. you. Great good to luck, see Al. you. Thank we you. Appreciate you coming out. All right. All right, tonight at 8 p.m., catch a special media day edition of Celtics Post Up on NBC Sports Boston. Amina Smith, Brian Scalabrini, Eddie House, and Chris Forsberg have the best interviews of the day and preview the upcoming season. It's presented by Eastern Propane and Oil. They're in your neighborhood.
All right, we got Luke Cornett on set. Luke. Hey, guys. <laughs> That's not a boo. That's a Lou. I've learned that over the years. Yeah. <laughs> well, sometimes it is. So you got to be able to distinguish. Not in Boston. Yeah. Not in Boston, my friend. <laughs> hey, I got to ask you this right off the top, because last year I asked you to break down the rule of verticality. You really enjoyed that. So I have something else prepared that I want to ask you to break down. All right. What do you have to do to be able to host, guest host an episode of You from the Rafters at such a high level that you did last season? Hmm. I mean, we're talking smashing hit numbers across the board, video, audio. Stop it. The all people right. love Luke Cornett. You know, I guess it's just uh, all the hours of, like, random interview podcast, comedy shows, SNL, all that stuff. It, Mom, it paid off. You know? <laughs> if it was just for that moment, then that was it. And I guess, uh, yeah, it was a lot of fun, though. That was a great time. It was awesome. Yeah. Eddie, I don't know if you heard the episode, so... Luke stood in and, and guest host an episode, and he told me right before we started recording, he was like, there have been times where I've just been laying down in bed, and I've woken up in the middle of the night and had a joke in my head, and he had a notepad next to the bed. He was writing it down. Oh, no, it was on your yeah. phone, right? You yeah. No, it was. It became a problem where I had to start. <laughs> That's like, like coaches. I, That's like coaches. Exactly. But yeah, not like me. A cycle it's with that. joke it ideas jokes. for a podcast. <laughs> yeah. No, I really had to be like, all right, I got to put this away and just This is affecting my life. Yeah, yeah. I got to draw like a cutoff hour where I'm not thinking about it anymore. Sam, Sam said that when you were at the wedding that there was a cornet contest sighting mm. in the building. So, did you do a cornet contest? I did not want to do it. Uh, some of <laughs> Sam's friends came up and then they were obviously, they're quite supportive and wanting me to do it. And, you know, as we learned last year, the phlegmatic, I'm a people pleaser. <laughs> and, I, and so then I did it. But then it got out of, yeah, I was not happy to do it. It's 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 its own thing. Well, you know, you just let it. There it is. Oh, we've got. You really look like you're footage. enjoying yourself here. I was I told mean. all phones would be taken away at this wedding. <laughs> look at how wet so his hair is. The, the dance moves. I mean. Yeah. Have great no, we had a great time. Told. We nice of you to join bands. your teammates. Back. They have yeah. headbands. Your shirt is open. Your tie is down, and your hair is wet. So I don't <laughs> think I've ever been to a wedding where I wasn't immediately really sweaty. <laughs> and this was like August fourth in the scalding heat of Milwaukee, Wisconsin. <laughs> and so, yeah, I. The second I start dancing, I just have to start taking precautionary measures. I also, if you notice in that picture, I look gross. I like facial hair. I, wasn't hair. Say I was it. like, I was like four months in, I think, without a haircut. I don't know what it was, but I wasn't. What's your go-to dance move when you uh, when you're on? The, I know you've yeah. had a lot of weddings this summer. So it's it's the Carlton is the one I'll break out if I'm really feeling it. No, you can't do the Carlton. I can do the Carlton. I actually just just asked to do it back in one of these. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Stand up. You got to break it down for us. Give it to us real quick. Are, are you willing? I can do it. You're yeah, a people pleaser. So I don't know if I'm No, you're a people <laughs> pleaser. I thought you were a people yeah. pleaser. Now you're, now you're taking advantage of that. You just said that. It, you can't say it It'll out loud. You're It'll be great. I feel great. like I'm being peer pressured. <laughs> it's That's what happened great. at the wedding. I don't, I, I'm not doing this right now. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry to the people. Folks, I know it's the material tried. everybody wanted. We tried to we get tried. it. We tried. we tried. That will be a season-long attempt, just so you know. Yeah, you guys have to earn it. Yeah, for sure. We'll get, we'll get it on the social channels. How about after every win, hit the Carlton? Maybe after certain types of wins or Big games wins. or like a, yeah. I, I could probably throw it out in a game, but that would be And like, one, get an and one in. Yeah, I think, I think you would immediately get taken out by the other team. <laughs> <laughs> I think that would happen. Yeah, you would not last long. Let's, let's turn this a little bit serious. All right. Um, what's it like for you to now not be the tallest person mm -hmm. on the roster? No, I... I agree. So, yeah, I played with uh, KP in New York, and so I remember from that. But then it's funny, even when he came back, and I was like, gosh, I forgot. He's just quite <laughs> he's a bit huge. taller than me. Yeah. And so there's definitely a tucking of tails of mine that goes on, <laughs> where you used to walk with your chin up a little bit, and now you're just sheepishly walking through the door. Here's some of your other celebrations. Mm, yeah. I was. Uh, I don't know what got into me last year, because <laughs> that was not present for all of my life. I celebrated once in a high school game. I got a meeting a technical for it, and I think I just repressed all those things. No technical there. No, I did get one technical this year, first technical for <laughs> defending my, my friend and teammate, Derek White. 
who got obliterated in the face. But. Well, so we did you? you. Did, did Derek pay your your tech? Uh, now he's supposed to take a pay your tech. You know that, right? So I do. The thing is, is that he got hit, and all I did though was I was on the bench and I took like a step or two too forward. Uh, so it wasn't like I was going in and getting in the way and like defending him. I, I literally like turned up the sideline. They blew the whistle. He's like tech on you for being off the bench, and I immediately just turned around and sat down because I was like, yeah, I'm not <laughs> well, supposed to be here. You didn't even get to get your money's worth. Oh, it was not at all. It was the, <laughs> what, what, how much are the techs now? 2500 2500 Yeah, yeah 25 I, Yeah. I know you were like 20. Yeah. 2500 Yeah, dollars. I would have made 1000 <laughs> No, dollars. Been, <laughs> thank it's you. It's been for going up every yeah. year in this economy, you know. Oh. <laughs> so, he, so he did not pay for it. He did not. But I wasn't expecting. Yeah, it wasn't yeah, like it wasn't the type like of situation you where somebody for him and yeah, had, I plan to fight for a teammate this you did, year. Yeah, okay. No, don't do that. We need you. We need you. <laughs> yeah. um, no, but talking about the seven footers, you got three of them on the roster when you cut when you uh, include Namias. Yep. How is that the tallest roster that you've been around in terms of like the high end? Yeah, it's foot. definitely pretty, pretty up there. So, so Taco was here when I first got here, which he counts for like two seven yes, footers. Yes, he's seven seven. Uh, so, yeah, this is definitely up there. My college team for college, we kind of had three or near seven footers around, but like so relative to college. But mm-hmm. this is the tallest. I think it's the tallest team I've been it's on. A lot of stats. Definitely. Now, how excited yeah. are you about this this season? Yeah, I, I'm ready to get going. I think we all are. I think it's. Uh, just exciting to get back into the gym and like just get to practice and get to working and um, yeah, I think just having like a very daily approach is something we're excited just building our team and getting better and improving throughout the year and especially with uh, kind of the new dynamics we have and abilities to kind of show up on the court. It'll be uh, fun to work together and to be able to piece that together. Does it feel different than last year? Cause I'll go to the year when we won it in 2008. Coming into training camp, that first meeting, First time we all got together, it was just a different feel. And that, that first practice, our second unit, we beat up on the first unit, right? And from that point on, that's how we had spirited competition. And I think that's what drove us to be the best. Are you thinking that that's where this team is at right now? Uh, I, I do feel like that is kind of uh, how we're feeling and approaching it. We're just ready to compete and we want to compete. Um, we've had a great I mean, last couple of weeks and month even in the gym where guys are just yeah, ready to play, ready to challenge each other, and uh, yeah, ready to kind of just, I think, everyone to take like, the next step forward in their games and for us to do that collectively as a team. Um, I think there is that, that focus and that energy, and it's a strange thing. It's like, it's just there, you know? Mm-hmm. You just walk into the gym, and people are just you know like, ready to go at it and ready to compete. Yeah, yeah. Um, and that's a... Yeah, it's the most fun to like be in as a player because you just get to go all out and like not think about any of the other stuff. You just get to play. Um, so we're, yeah, I'm definitely looking forward to getting going. And, and looking forward for yourself. One last question here: with Rob heading out yesterday in that trade, it really does open up an opportunity for you here. What are you looking to try to provide to the team this year? I mean, you, you did set a career high in appearances last season, but what are you looking forward to for yourself here this season? Uh, yeah, I, like it was interesting with the news because I was obviously just sad to hear about uh, Rob and Malcolm, but uh, I'm like, we'll miss them. But I think for me from like, like all of last year, it's kind of the exact same thing where it's like I'm just ready and trying to put myself in the best position for us for that day, for that game, or if I'm not playing for whenever like the next time for me to be available. So I feel like for me from a perspective shift, I'm like, I'm just – always just looking to do whatever it takes to put our team in the best position for us to win that day or game or week or whatever the situation is. So although that might change some of like what my exact training and type of stuff like that, I think I'm just ready to be um, the most available and the most uh, prepared I can be for uh, the roles as they come. I I feel like it doesn't really change a whole lot other than the tangible perspective of what I'm trying to do because I've always just tried to be about really winning and nothing else and I think if that's kind of your guide it sets everything up for you uh, pretty easily. Joe Mazzula's smiling somewhere because that's exactly what you want to hear from someone in your position. You're just going to buy into every day to provide what the team needs. That's it's awesome to hear. We can't wait to hear, uh, see you out on the court. We got a game on Sunday, which yeah. is crazy. Yeah, that's crazy. You got <laughs> first day of camp tomorrow. But Luke Cornett, man, we appreciate you coming on thank and you. having a little bit of fun with us. Yeah, feel yeah. free to do the dance moves on the way out. Yeah, if you that's want not going to happen. But oh, thank you very much. Yeah, I appreciate it. it. We, we yeah. will get that video this year. Well, you'll try. <laughs> there. All right, good to see you. Interested in becoming a Celtics season ticket member? Take the first step by joining the wait list. You'll get priority access to ticket plans when they become 
become available. Visit Celtics.com slash waitlist to learn more. We're back on set here with Delano Banton. Hey, man, what's uh, media day number one been like with the Boston Celtics? Uh, it's been good. Um, kind of just getting the process, feeling everybody out. But, you know, it's been great. Um, everybody's been welcoming me with open arms. So I've been having a great time, having fun, and getting some great content up. <laughs> and you were here with the team for Summer League. Mm -hmm. uh, you've been back here, it sounds like, for a couple months working out in the gym. Yeah. What have you been working on with the team? What have the coaches been trying to tell you they need you to do for this season, mm -hmm. rolling up to tomorrow? Um, definitely just um, trying to find myself in the right spots. Um, just knowing what the guys we have with all the talent that we have. Um, just trying to find your way to make yourself available and make yourself useful on the court. Um, so definitely just trying to use, do what I can, use the intangibles that I have to get other guys going and you know get these guys open. And, try, and, and you know, for somebody that's easy. not, for, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to step on you like that. If somebody's not familiar with your game, can you tell the people like, hey, what do you bring to the table? How do you want to play? What's your, how you plan on helping this team win given the opportunity? Um, definitely just playing with pace, um, using my length and versatility, trying to you know get other guys involved, uh, play with pace, use it on the defensive end. You know, definitely trying to take pride this year and guarding the other team's top guys and using my length and you know get these guys off them and you know save energy for that. But just definitely just trying to find a way, um, playing with these top guys, top guys in the league like JT and JB. So you, know, you got to find ways to make yourself available when you know a lot of focus is on them and try and make things easier. I, I read somewhere that you try to model your game after Rajon Rondo. Is that? Uh, yeah, he was, he was my favorite player growing up. Uh, have you had any talks with him, interactions with him? No, I actually anything? haven't. You no, want I us haven't. to make that happen? Yeah. Yeah, you're in, a, you're in the right I think, spot I now. I think that guy right there could probably make that uh, happen. Sounds good, then. We'll talk to him. <laughs> yeah, we can holler. Yeah, for sure. Uh, but really, the, you're six foot seven. You've got a, a great length and wingspan. How did you wind up being a guard and a ball handler? Um, well, I had a, a crazy growth spur. I grew like five or six inches in like six months when I was in high school. So I wasn't always the tallest. I was probably like 5'10", still in like the ninth grade playing point guard. But then I grew to like 6'4", 6'5". That's and then crazy. My coach just kept me on the ball because he knew how long it would go being like a taller guard. Yeah. So, you know, shout That's, out to him. Where That's are you awesome. from with that accent? I'm from Toronto. Toronto, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know Mike George? Yeah, I know Mike George. That's yeah. my dog. Yeah, yeah. That's your, that's your guy? Yeah, yeah that's I know Mike guy. George too. He's so, he cool dude. Speaking of being from Toronto, we got two of you on the yeah. team are from, who are from Toronto. Around, along yeah. with O'Shea Brissett. What is that like having someone who you can talk to and lean on who is familiar with mm -hmm. the same area that you grew up in? Um, you know, it's definitely great. Um, you know, just having another guy, it just goes to show where basketball in Canada as a whole is going. So, um, you know, it's great just being able to have two people from Toronto because, you know, growing up playing basketball in Toronto, it's like you don't know how far you can make it just mm -hmm. within the, with the opportunities that are there. But you know, it definitely just goes it's a big thing for Canada basketball, showing we're headed in the right direction with a lot more guys in the league. So it's great. You, you did a few basketball camps in Toronto growing up, but DeMar DeRozan, was he kind of your mentor a little bit? Uh, uh, not mentor, but um, just just in my neighborhood that I grew up in, we had like a lot of like camps and like giveaways and stuff. So we would have them come. They built a, a, a basketball court one time, and then um, Demar Derozan came to another community center to do a camp. And I got to go to a lot of like the Raptors cares yeah. and like NBA cares stuff as a kid. So yeah. First player from Canada ever drafted by the Raptors. That's that's pretty darn cool. That's that's that history. It's never going anywhere else. What did that mean to you when that happened a couple years ago? Uh, it definitely meant a lot, man. Just I uh, just wanted to go to the NBA growing up my whole life, but uh, definitely getting drafted to the city that you're from is like two dreams come true. So um, you know, it's great. It's great for me and my family. We love the opportunity that I had there. I love the experience. Love the time there. But you know, moving on and trying to get things done here now. Why did you want to come here? Um, just earlier, to, uh, just knowing that the pride that it is to be a Celtic, um, just when you walk into the gym, just the competitive nature, the energy that everybody's going at, the pace, and just knowing all the guys that came before you, and just the the, his, the, the history behind the name, and you know, just being able to be a Celtic, it just I feel like it'll help put you in position to go a long ways, and you know, just definitely just front office and coaches and stuff having you know a path for me to go, and just believing in my game and trying to help me be successful. So. It's, this place develops young players, that's for sure. Besides. Ron 
Rondo uh, being your favorite player, are there any other players that you kind of draw inspiration from, somebody that you want to pattern your game after, somebody that you look at and say, hey, I, I, want, I need to work on this to try to get that incorporated into my game? Um, I would say a lot of guys I watch, uh, you know, a lot of guys play. Obviously, like growing up, I watched obviously all the best players, but I would say like somebody who I actually pick to choose and watch and care for because I really like to pass the ball like Rondo did. So I would only say Rondo for that. But me being taller and like, you know, I have to watch other guys, watch different moves and get to different spaces. But like definitely like Sean Livingston, him mm -hmm. being a, another tall right. guard, 6'8". So definitely guys like that. Maybe You no. got that Sean Livingston floater game? We'll see, man. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I, I want all of our fans to really get to know you here. This is your first opportunity to be in front of them. What many of them probably don't know is that you actually spent some time in Massachusetts, right? Yes, I did. You went to, was it prep school yes, uh, at Redemption? Um, kind yeah. of middle of the state, up at the top. Yeah, I actually did my first year at the McDuffie School, so that was in Granby, Massachusetts. Mm -hmm. And then the next following year, I wanted to reclassify up to 2018, which is the class I came out of in high school. So I transferred to Redemption Christian Academy. So what, what was your time like spending it in, in Massachusetts before now? Uh, it, it was good. It was very quiet. It was like like a smaller town. Kind of in the middle of yeah, nowhere. Yeah, a smaller yeah. town. But, you know, we would come up to Boston like every couple weeks and stuff like that, go to like um, Springfield. So I'm yeah. like kind of familiar with it a lot. And I know, I know people here. I know a lot of kids that went to my schools went, are from Boston. So I know some people here. I know some things. That's great. It's nice to have some familiarity around Yes, you. it is. Yes. Well, we're excited. Thank you so much for joining us. Appreciate Thank it. Thank you so much for yeah, having Good luck this season. Appreciate it. Check out the latest Celtics Talk podcast. Chris Forsberg has much more from Celtics Media Day. You can scan the QR code on the screen or find it on your favorite podcasting app or on YouTube. It's presented by 24autogroup.com, 11 locations across New England. Tatum on the cut, takes it all the way and slams it. Blocked by Tatum. We go to overtime. The Celtics are going to win this a game seven back. Here's Brown, three-pointer, is good! Tied at 106. Tatum gonna shoot a three and drill it! <laughs> Another three. Cuts it in! 51 for Jason Tatum! Brown takes it, that shot. Oh! Tatum puts up a three! Bang! Jason Tatum! Let's do it. We are back with O'Shea Brissett, and the first thing he said when he walked over to the set, meeting us all for the first time, by the way, he said, we're going to flip this, and I'm going to ask you guys questions. Yeah, yeah, I got He's got stuff. his camera over here. Yeah, that's cool. If, you've been, you've had this all day. Yeah, no, I'm just, you know, getting some content around. Can we know. get a plug? Brissy Files? Yeah, that's it. And Let's uh, go. On YouTube. On Instagram. Um, Dang, what is my YouTube? Brissy TV on YouTube. Check me out. <laughs> you should know that. Yeah, I should know that. Just, <laughs> right. Just for you guys. All right, questions. Let's go. Um, okay, so when you're when you're going to the basket, do you like to kick to the corner, or are you more of a I'm a finish at the rim type of guy? I'm, I, I know for me, I'm definitely not finishing because okay. I don't have the height. Mm -hmm. I don't have the strength. I got to kick it to someone else to okay. finish it. Yeah, I hear that. So that, that's just me, Eddie. Depending on what's going on. I mean, I can't just be predetermined, to okay. be honest with you. See, that's I get to the back, right I'm finish, I'm going to finish. Uh -huh. If I got to pull up, I'm going to pull up. But if I ain't got nothing yet, then I'm going to kick it. Okay. But I'm looking to get a bucket, man. I, I played in high – I was too short, so I would just – No, let, make, yeah. let me tell you a little story about Amanda <laughs> I knew Fugue. My, we had I our, knew my fate. We had our media <laughs> game a few years back uh -huh. at the Auerbeck Center, yeah. and she drained one in my face. Nice. It was like to, to end a quarter, I think, right? Awesome. To beat the buzzer, drained it right in we my face. We have the video somewhere. We got to find not. Were no, you playing real not. defense? Let's not find yes. Was you playing real defense? Or oh, come you on, just let her shoot? Come no, on, don't do no, me no, like that. that. No, some people yeah, be like, crazy. I just let her shoot. No, I was, I was playing real defense. Oh, Thanks, is, thank yeah, you. I'll pay I you was. later. Where the J is at? <laughs> <laughs> give me so you give us up. Where the J is? <laughs> so, O'Shea, uh, first media day with the Celtics. Or do, yep. you, do you still want to ask questions? No, no, no I'm good. Yeah, That's all I want to know. I want to know. Try to get your player profile. All right, all right. It's not good. I'll tell you that. Scouting report's not good. First media day with the Celtics. Yeah. What's it been like so far? What are your expectations heading into tomorrow? Uh, it's been fun. It's been really fun. Um, you know, it's media day, taking pictures, doing all that stuff. I always say media day is like a ball handling workout. You know, when you do all that stuff, you're just dribbling for 10 minutes, whatever, just 
you know, a whole bunch of stuff. But it's fun. You know, I'm excited. Putting my jersey on is crazy. You know, going to my locker and seeing the, the jersey was a surreal moment, um, especially because it's Boston, know how much history is in this team. And now to have my name on a jersey, uh, it's crazy. What made you choose number 12? Um, so, honestly, my first year coming to the NBA, I was always number 11. From my, like high school, college, I was number 11. Um, but I was in Exhibit 10 for Toronto, so I was really like trying out for the team. They asked me what number I wanted, I said 11. But there was a guy who was also in Exhibit 10 coming in, but he had more years in the NBA. Mm. So they gave him 11, because he wanted 11. Okay. Um, so I just tried to go one up, get 12. Okay. Yeah. And you had to carry it over here. Yeah. <laughs> Love it. Yeah. Love it. Maybe for those that aren't familiar as much with you, how would you describe your, your overall style of play, and what can you bring this team? Uh, for me, I feel like I'm a little bit of everything. You know, I could be... Um, really key on the defense, do a lot on offense. Um, that's kind of how I pride myself, just doing a little bit of everything. Um, I try not to just be, you know, one trick pony, which sounds crazy basketball because, you know, we play offense and defense. But I just feel like there's a lot of guys out there that really stick to just one thing. But for me, I like to expand and just learn. And, you know, this is an opportunity for me to um, expand as well because we have guys who are, you know, really amazing on offense. So playing off of them is going to be really fun. Um, and just you get a lot spots. of open looks. Yeah, yeah, no, for sure, 100. percent Yeah, focus on them. Yeah. <laughs> Look at those guys. I'll be, I'll be standing over there waiting for my shot. How excited are you about this season? I mean, especially with all the moves that have been made. Christoph Porzingis coming in. Mm -hmm. Also, yesterday the news dropping that Drew Holiday has been traded for. Uh, how excited about this opportunity. The window is open mm -hmm. right now, and it's just a matter of are we going to get in it or not. So how excited are you about go trying to get through that window? I'm really excited. You know, ever since I found out this is where I was going to be, I was, you know, looking forward to the season. Just playing, um, getting back in the NBA groove. You know, summer's long, especially when you finish in uh, April. It's not going to be long Not going to be long here, and I'm excited <laughs> for that. Um, but, nah, man, I'm, I'm really excited. Just different culture, you know, winning culture. And you can just feel it, you know, through practice the little practice that we've had. Um, it's a different vibe, and it's something that I respect, you know, for all the guys that have been here and um, are doing everything it takes to, to again, have a, a longer season. This is the first time that you've been on a roster that is primed to win a championship. For sure. Right? This guy over here, he knows all about winning a championship and playing in that kind of role off of the stars. Eddie, what would you tell O'Shea that he needs to bring into camp from a mindset perspective, from an on-the-court perspective of how to excel around these great players? Well, I think the most important thing is to talk to the coach and find out what he wants you to do, sure. right? And then be a star in that role, yeah. whatever it is. You know, it might be 18 minutes one game. Well, I'll say I'll speak for myself. It might be 18 minutes some games. It might be 28 minutes some games. It might be only 12 minutes some games. But in those minutes, make them meaningful, make them count, for sure. and just find out what it, exactly it is that they want from you. And then now you know, yeah. as opposed to trying to figure out and you think you got to do this, but that's not really what they need from you. They need something else. So find out get your role carved out, define your role, and be a star in that role. For sure. I'm actually really interested to know what, what you know about what that role is going to be because I think a lot of people, I know you, I know all about your game. I'm a Syracuse guy. Yeah. I know your game. Let's go. Let's go Cuse. Oh yes, sir. Uh, go but you, you came into the league as more of a wing, playing mm -hmm. a lot of three. Slowly you've shifted over. You spent, I, I believe it's calculated, 92% of your minutes last year were at power forward. Mm -hmm. What do you expect to be your role on this team? Is it going to be four? Is it going to be three? What do you expect? Uh, honestly, I feel like I could be put anywhere. You know, um, you know, look at the guys that we have out there. We're all – we could play really big. We could play, you know, some big, like two bigs. We could play one. Um, and then I feel like with that, I would end up at the four. If we play two, I would end up at the three. Um, but, again, you know, talking to coach and figuring out what that role is, you know, offensively, it doesn't matter where I am. I feel like I'll be able to fit in whatever it is. Um, you know, and it's just for me, I, honestly, I feel it's going to be bringing energy offensively and defensively, whether it's coming off the bench, whether it's starting some games, whatever it is, being that energy guy to kind of flip the game around if we're having a little low, if we're having, you know, some slow starts, um, coming in with that second unit and just bringing the energy for real. Being on a team that has a championship opportunity, right, yeah. a championship caliber team, but coming from somewhere that did Tell to talk about the difference. A lot of people don't understand it. There is a culturally there is difference, and people talk about it. But you feel it, you yeah. understand it, and it's from the top to the bottom. The ball boys to the equipment guys. Everybody has a sense of this is how we get down over here. Talk about the difference from coming from a team that's a non-contender to a contender. Well, you know, I've only been here really two weeks, but 
And no, no shade on nobody else. No, no, for it, sure, it, for yeah, sure. You know, uh, you know, Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown have been here working out. They don't have to be here right now. You know, they could come. They could have been here today. They could have just got here today and started camp tomorrow. Obviously, those are, you know, our all-stars. They don't have to be here. Al Horford, year 17, he's here working out, playing with all the guys who are coming in and the young guys. So that in itself shows all right, we're really trying to build some, you know, togetherness and a winning culture because we're getting after it. Um, beforehand. And again, it's not just the guys who quote unquote have to be here. It's the guys who are going to play 30, 40 everybody. minutes a game. You know what I'm saying? It's everybody. And mm -hmm. it's a full team and we're all here um, learning each other because we all know that goes a long way. How does seeing that motivate you even more as a player, knowing yeah. that the, the vets are in it? A whole bunch. A whole bunch. It shows that, you know, we're they're willing and ready to go to war. And if we're not going to follow suit, the guys come in and the young guys, then there's no place for us on the team. And I think that we've all shown that being there and playing and really competing at a level that's going to take us uh, where we want to be throughout the season. Continuing on that conversation you guys were having about kind of like figuring out what that role is. One of the small that we haven't talked about this at all today, but in losing Rob Williams, one of the best screen setters on the team, right? You want to know how to become a, a great friend of Jalen Brown and Jason Tatum and <laughs> set great screens. <laughs> great screens, yeah. What's your background in that perspective? Because I've watched some film on you. You've got some background in setting veer screens and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. Like, wh wh what's the baseline of what you try to accomplish when you're setting screens out there to free guys up? Knock them, hit them, <laughs> get them. <laughs> You know? Yeah, and it's like, again, nothing, nothing malicious or nasty, but being there at the right time, you know, it's, good. it's still I'm going to have to learn, you know, JT and, and Jalen Brown when they have the ball and what they like to do. But at the end of the day, if I'm going to set a screen, I'm going to make sure. Because it, it's going to free them, but my guy's going to go because those are all-stars. I'm going to roll and be wide open, you know, if I set the right screen and, and do it correctly. And it the right like screen is also the right angle. For sure. Making sure you have the right angle. To, if you don't want them to go over the top, For sure. you're trying to force them to go under. There's certain ways you could, there's certain ways you could set screens. So, I mean, he understands, and he was hitting it right there. Yeah, for sure. And for everyone who hasn't watched a lot of O'Shea Brissett, this man is stronger than he looks, too. <laughs> I mean, he is. I mean, you've played some minutes at center in yeah. your NBA career. So sure. we're, we're looking forward to it. I'm really excited, man. I can't wait. I can't Swiss wait. Swiss Army going. knife. Yeah, yeah. I love me. it. Throw me in there. I'll do and whatever. Cuse. <laughs> Go Cuse. Go have Cuse this year. Matt, have you caught up with Matt Reynolds yet on Syracuse? I have not. Okay, you got to do that. I have not. He's, a, he's the other Syracuse guy yeah, on staff. Yeah. So. Okay. Love it. All right, O'Shea, sure. we appreciate the time, appreciate man. Appreciate you guys. Thank you. If you need any more questions asked to us, feel free to come back. All right, I will. I will. All right, Thank man. you guys. All right. Appreciate the season. All right. Now there's a new way to stay in the game. Sign up to receive text messages from the Boston Celtics and be the first to know about offers, content, sweepstakes, and more. Visit Celtics.com slash text to opt in. There's something to bite on to put on top of Just any little something to put. Eddie's, Hi everyone, Eddie's hungry. welcome back to Media Day. Eddie, what kind of sandwich were you were you know, wanting? Stomach, I know we're getting a little hungry my here. My stomach was so. growling. <laughs> I have an apple under the desk. Would that would that hold uh, you apple over? Apple a day keeps the doctor away. <laughs> I got a banana, but <laughs> no, that's no, all. I'm not eat y'all. They, they're gonna find something for all me. Right. Well, guys, um, we have a little bit of time before uh, Jason Tatum will Who? be joining us. Oh, Jason Tatum. Yes. Okay, yeah. yeah. The man. Um, but what are you noticing? Just I mean, from what the guys are saying, they're they're ready. They they want to get to work what are you noticing from this team not to say that we're comparing it to the the 2008 no. team when you guys said you came in for training camp and you could feel a difference but does this feel different a little bit I think the what, what this team is is you feel the excitement you know I think everybody's excited not only the guys that have been here but 
the, the new guys. They're excited to be a part of something that's different, that's new, that's going to that's winning. You know, the culture change. And I played on the team when I was with the. I went from Miami to the Clippers, and you talk about a culture difference, and you feel it. And when you go from something that's winning to something that's losing, they get back to something that's winning. You respect it more. You you don't take it for granted like, oh, this is how it's always going to be. So uh, I think that these guys are excited. They're ready to work and it, it all starts from the top and I'm talking about from Brad on all the way down and everybody has that feel and it does feel like oh wait it does feel like okay this is we have something that we're excited about and all the players feel it I feel it myself I mean and I think that move yesterday you know put the icing on the cake for me was like because once he got traded to Portland I'm like we got to get him mm -hmm. somehow if we can f figure out a way to get him I think that that would be like I said, the the piece that put us over the top and, you know, they were able to pull it off and I think that everybody's excited about it. Everybody has an opportunity to come in and contribute and, I mean, Joe is excited after having a year, you know, so a, a whole year last year and then having a whole off season to prepare, to wrap his mind around, this is what my job is going to be and for everybody else too, I think that um, there's nothing but excitement around here. Eddie, I'm glad you said it starts from the top because it really does. I mean, you look back to your year when you guys won the championship, it started with those trades. It mm -hmm. started with Danny Ainge making those trades and going for it. It started with ownership approving those trades, right? Now we look at this. To yesterday, it's ownership approving a trade to spend big money to bring a guy like Drew Holiday in. And now Sorry, you, Mark, we're going to yeah, interrupt you. Yeah, you're going to have to cut you. that uh, short, we man. We got the man in the building. Jason you got to cut that show us. quick. Listen, <laughs> talking about starting from the top, this is it right here, right? Like, Jason, the guys have been talking all day about how you and Jalen have been here for a couple weeks now, putting in the work well before training camp. Why did you want to be here early to kind of set the tone of what this camp is going to be? Um, I think it's important, right, you know, what we're trying to accomplish. Um, and we play a team sport, right? You want everybody to be on the same page. And, you know, it's a lot of guys that were here a month and a half, two months ago, right, and all the younger guys. So, you know, I was eager to come back, eager to, you know, be around the guys. We got a lot of new coaches. Um, so just getting, you know, ready. So by tomorrow, uh, you know, we all hit the ground running. You put some weight on this summer? You're looking you can big. see it. You're the looking shoulders. big, man. Your shoulders. Yeah, I, I put on, I'm like 225 now. I was like 214 last season. Wow. There you can see it in his shoulders. Good I, luck, rest of the league. I, I, yeah, <laughs> right, right, for real. So, this is my question. For somebody that got everything in his bag that is all NBA player that's had all the success, what did you work on? What was your mindset going into this summer like? What areas were you saying, I have to get better in these areas? Because, I mean, to me, you, you look at your Mad uh, Madden rating, your, your 2K rating, to me, you probably got A-pluses everywhere, right? So what was it that you was like, I specifically got to work on this because I feel that that's a, kind of a weak spot in my game? Um, I would say being able to dictate, you know, what I want to do and not let the defenders or the defense, right, um, and, and being able to pick my spots and being able to dominate the game um, not just scoring, but in air, all areas, whether it's, you know, being aggressive first quarter or whether it's getting other guys involved first quarter and late game situations, making the right play uh, and being more efficient, right? Just how can I continue to grow, continue to be the best version of me um, while, you know, helping the, the team out and making sure we're on the right path. And was that 10 pounds that you put on, was that part of being able to dictate where you go? Did you feel that defenders were getting a little bit more physical than what you liked, and so you had to be able to deliver a, low, a blowback or be able to stand your ground? Is that Was that part of it? Uh, a little bit, and I think I'm just getting a little bit older, and I think my body is maturing um, season after season, but just knowing that, you know, we're trying to play till June, you know, every year. And it's going to be a long season. Um, so making sure that, you know, my body is in the right condition um, to, you know, withstand, you know, all the games and the minutes and, you know, whatever they need me to do. I know this offseason you also put in some work with, with Paul Pierce. We have some footage of that. How was that, uh, just getting a chance to work out with him and, and maybe learn from him as well? Uh, it was great. I mean, I spent every day with Paul for like three and a half, four weeks. Uh, and he would, he would come in the gym every morning and he would work out with me in the weight room and he would follow us to the gym while I worked out with my trainer Drew and he would watch and it was just cool to have him around um, because, you know, even he started to get motivated. Paul lost like 15, 18 you pounds. You can see it yeah, too. That's what he said. While he yeah. was out there. Um, and you could tell he, 
it was motivation for him and he's like he kind of felt younger and you know it was an honor for us to have him around um and he just in a sense became like one of the guys um and it was great to have him around he told stories i asked him questions um and you know it was a big part of the summer and um look forward to you know him coming to training camp and stuff like that and you know seeing him around more often you guys Was there one piece of advice that maybe stands out to you that he told you this summer or maybe a story that really sticks out when you think back to that time uh i think just you know all the little things that he took away from his championship team in 08 and just you know how close you have to be as a unit and you know how you need other guys to feel right you know important um and which they are but just how you need everybody on the team um you know to help win a championship because one series you know somebody might be the x factor that's you know different from the next series but you know they all add up and um just all the stories that he was telling me and, and you know every um, team meeting and things they did off the court as a group and uh just things that made that oh team so special so we're about five minutes in right now. We haven't even mentioned the two gigantic moves that the team made during the offseason, one of which was yesterday bringing in Drew Holiday, the other back in June um, bringing in Christos Porzingis. Uh, reaction first and foremost to the trade yesterday. Obviously, you got to lose a couple of your close buddies. You, po you posted about that on Instagram. But the guy that you're bringing in, how do you think that he affects your team and your guys' ability to get over that hump and win this year? No, I mean, Drew's a, a great player, uh, great person. I uh, had the privilege of been on the same team with the Olympic team two years ago. We won a gold medal. Obviously, he's won a championship, um, and he's, you know, as respected as anybody in this league. It's just how he carries himself, you know, how he plays on both ends of the ball. So very fortunate and, and, and lucky to have him. Um, but on the same side, right, I spent five years, five or six years with Rob. You know, that's somebody I was really, really close with, and somebody I was – big part of the success that we had um, as an organization over the last couple of years. So um, to see him get traded, right, is, is tough. Right? It's somebody you grow, build a relationship with. And, uh, you know, things happen fast, right? You know, nobody saw that coming. Yep. And so, you know, you feel you feel for that, um, as well as Malcolm. He, he was only here for a year, but, right, you know, it was – great season that we all had last year um, somebody that I really respect and he was a true professional so it's always great gaining new teammates talented guys but it's always tough you know seeing your friends you know transition to another team and that same thing happened with the Porzingis trade obviously you got to say goodbye to Marcus Smart but you do bring in a seven foot three guy who can score on the perimeter post up run pick and rolls with you how do you see him affecting what you and Jalen are doing on a daily basis and, and what does that open up that you might not have had the past couple years yeah I think he just adds another dynamic of versatility right as tall as he is he can stretch the floor um, I don't think we've necessarily had a, a presence you know as tall as he is that is as talented he is um, on the offensive end and um, you know I'm really excited about that you know somebody that can push the floor you know spot up and shoot threes you know take it down to the post um, just uh, something that we really haven't had to that level right um, since I've been here so I'm uh, really really excited you know to have him on our team I want to go back to something you were saying about what Paul told you about the 08 team is you know everybody you're going to need somebody it's somebody every every time right uh, for example in game four uh, the finals right I hadn't played that much Sam was having a problem uh, they, Kobe was guarding Sam Kobe was guarding Rondo they put me in the game, and I go. And so that was one of my game. We come back from 24. So you, I had to be ready. But it all stems from our very first training camp practice we had. Our second unit kicked the first unit's ass, <laughs> and we came in talking. And so that next game, next two practices, they tore our ass up. And so that's the type of connection that I feel like this team has to have. You have, you have to set that tone of like, if y'all. Tear them up. One come in and oh man, where y'all at? I, yeah. I don't even see y'all. Well, y'all supposed to be. I thought y'all best second unit in the. Y'all supposed to be the best second unit in the in the league. I don't see. You know, what I mean? but it's, it's all right. in competition banter. For sure. And then next thing you know, now y'all every practice is a grind. And if we grind against each other like that, we go see these cats. Our second unit is probably run through half of the first units. You know what I mean? So 
to me, I'm excited for that reason because there is depth here. Mm -hmm. We talked about Porzingis. He adds a, a post-up presence, pick and roll presence. He's going to be down there. He's going to have to up his rebounds a little bit. But the versatility that you guys have on the defensive end, I'm talking about from Peyton Pritchard, Derek, Drew, you, and also uh, JB. It's going to be tough for guys to get to the basket. Yeah. It's going to be really tough. And are you planning on trying to go for to be an all NBA defensive team player? Yeah. So that was, I think I did, I did an interview this summer and they asked me what my goal was. Um, obviously, to win a championship is always first and foremost, but um, I would love to make one of those all defensive teams with one of my teammates. Um, that's something that, you know, I would really be proud of. And it's a group effort, um, but that's something I really, really want to hang my hat on um, this season. Last season, it, 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 it's not as if Joe came into camp and was like offense before defense, but he certainly put more of an emphasis on the offense, and you guys trying to play fast and really spread it around on the perimeter. But this season, it really sounds like you guys are back to saying it's defense or nothing. Like, that's where it all starts. Why is that so important to what you guys do want to accomplish fast forward into June? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I mean, to be honest, I don't want to sacrifice either. I want to be the best offensive team. I want to be the best defensive team because, um, you know, we have that much talent. We have the group that is willing and capable to make the sacrifices to do that. Uh, it's going to be tough. It's not easy. It's a talented league. Um, but to get to where we're trying to get to, especially in the playoffs, that late in the season, you know, we got to hang our hat on defense. We got to get stops because some nights, you know, the shots that go in is not always going to go in, right? You know, we're going to have some off-shooter nights, but we got to rely on defense to get stops. And, uh, you know, we got to be able to win games when offense is, offense is not clicking at night. And I think that's a true test of a really, really good team. Do you feel it? Like, do, or do you feel it right now? Like, the energy, the anticipation, the excitement that you know, when the windows open, you know, it's only it ain't open that long. You know what I mean? So... Do you, I mean, I feel it. You know, I'm, I'm over here excited. Like, I want to suit up if I could. You know what I mean? To get out there and give y'all a couple threes. But really, like, it's one of, I feel it. Yeah. So, I do Do you feel it? Like, you the, you the main guy. So, if you, you got to feel it, and then everybody else going to feel it. How, how are you feeling right now about this season? No, I'm excited. I mean, it's a great day. Take all these pictures, but I'm, I'm ready for tomorrow. <laughs> you want to see the ball bounce. I'm ready for tomorrow. I'm ready to get out there and compete with guys. Mm -hmm. Like you said, it starts on day one. Um, and. You know, we got some new faces and new and, and new group. Um, so I'm ready to get that rolling. I'm ready to, you know, build some camaraderie and, and some chemistry, uh, compete, get after each other. Uh, you know, because it, it goes by fast. Like this is my seventh year in the league coming crazy. up, um, and I'm trying. You know, you don't want to take any years for granted because they go by fast. So uh, enjoy each and every day. Uh, don't take it for granted and. Um, you know, just get ready for the season. How Deuce doing, man? He doing good. <laughs> uh, he in kindergarten now, so he in uh, he a big boy. Um, he'll be six in December, so that's flying too. <laughs> Um, really quickly before we do let you you um, leave, I mean, you you hung out with Kevin Hart this this off season. I mean, was that really Deuce's jersey that you gave him? Because <laughs> I think that would probably fit me or probably be too big on me if I tried. To uh, put that on. No, so that here we go. That, that <laughs> fired not, it up. That was not his actual jersey. <laughs> Look at his face though. <laughs> but that was I, it. Got some good feedback. Yeah, no, I loved yeah, I that. Was, I loved it that. Was funny. <laughs> I believed it. That's hilarious. How was it getting it. to do this with him? I know he's he's kind of like a mentor to you in some ways, right? Yeah, this was uh this was fun because this was like easy, right? We have a, a, a relationship, we talk all the time. So uh, doing this was just you know it was another conversation just with cameras and people watching. Yeah. Um, so it was real authentic and organic, and uh, we just had fun with it. So let, let me ask you this because I was in your position before. Talk about how much fun it is to experience going into playing in the league, your son being right there next to you, being in the locker room and having all – just talk about how much fun that is because to, to me it was one of the best moments that I had playing. It was here with the Celtics. Mm -hmm. Even though he went everywhere with me, but yeah. here with the Celtics, winning, they allowed him to be the ball boy and all of those type of things. Just speak on that a little bit. Yeah, uh, it was great. And, you know, I didn't realize how big Deuce would be, uh, but – you know, a star. I, yeah, <laughs> I, I didn't envision that happening, but it's gotten so much more fun as he's gotten older, right? And, and to be able to more and more understand, you know, what I'm doing in the games. You know, he 
He asked me the other day, you know, do you have a game yet? Do you have a game yet? So he's excited. <laughs> um, he loves coming to the garden. He loves running around. He loves coming to the back and playing with the guys. Um, so seeing him grow up here and the relationship that he's had and, and um, how much fun he has being around, um, it's, it's really cool to see that, you know, we growing up um, – in Boston together, essentially. And I, one last question before we let you go, but and, and it kind of alludes to that, but you said this summer in that same story with Jeff Goodman that you're, you've just started feeling that real connection with the city, kind of like Deuce is probably feeling that connection with the city because he's really growing up here. Why did that just start now? And can you describe what that feeling is of, of having that connectivity of where you're playing and where you're calling home now? Uh, you know, when I got here, I was 19. Yeah. All right, I was. Uh, Couldn't even drink. Yeah, I was a, I was a baby. Um, I, I was 19. I was coming into a new city, starting a new job. Deuce was born three months later. Um, I was a real skinny, quiet kid. Um, and for me, I just always identified with being from St. Louis, right? Um, you know, I didn't. It's like I didn't pick to come here. I just, you know, somebody told me to come here. So it was, it was hard at first. Um, and I think just when you think about it, I bought my first home in Boston. I bought my first car. My son was born in Boston. I've spent uh, seven, almost seven years of my life. I'm 25. That's, you know, it's a big chunk of my life mm -hmm. in the city of Boston. And I've grown to build a lot of relationships away from the organization, right? Like people that I know in Boston, um, you know, and I've had so many great memories here that, you know, I would say over the last year and a half or two that I've really, you know, felt like I was a part of, of Boston, and that's a, that's a hell of a feeling. Mm -hmm. It's good to hear. It's only going to get stronger when you get that chip. Just sure. I know it. <laughs> sure. You can say it, right? No Eddie? doubt. I mean, what no was doubt. your feeling about the city after you guys won? Well, I, about the city? They, I mean, this, first of all, let me say this. Boston fans are different from any other fans. They understand the game. You could talk to a guy that's on the airplane and you could start <laughs> talking basketball and he knows what he's talking about. A lot of fans are casual fans. They really don't understand the game or the ins and outs of how the game goes or how you could put together a team and who's missing. Well, these fans get it. And, uh, at, you know, winning the championship and, and competing. And, and one thing about it, too, I wasn't a star. I never had your talent, right? But I competed. I played hard. I left it out on the court and they, they yep. respect that. So so winning the championship just put everything over the top. When you guys are playing and we're working at the garden, I go through it's, it's like, man, lights, camera, action. They taking pictures. <laughs> they want, you know, it's, it's love and it's genuine love yeah. from the fans. So it is something that's, that's extremely special. It's different from other cities. I played in a lot of other cities, but by far Boston has been, been the best. For sure. Oh. We can't wait to see if you guys hang that banner this season. I know that's the goal, and it all starts tomorrow, man. What are you, what are you most looking forward to for practice number one? I mean, just to get out there. Right? It's, I've, I've missed playing basketball. I've missed competing. Um, missed being with the guys on the team. You know, summer is fun, but I love to play basketball, so I'm excited to get back to doing that. Great. Right back at well, it. Thank you. Great all to right. see you. See you tomorrow. You, JT. Good luck this season, man. <laughs> Good to see you. The Celtics play their first preseason game on Sunday when they host the 76ers. Our coverage starts at 5.30 p.m. with Celtics pregame live. It's presented by TD Bank. Hey guys, uh, first thanks for having me, that was a really cool introduction. When you look at your hand, each finger has its own individual role. It can't fully succeed without the rest of the guys. And so the teamwork is really, really important, but so is individual performance. And so coming here is one piece, and then taking everything that you learn and continuing to do it for long periods of time is the most important. There are always going to be hard things no matter what you do, right? So I think that's really important for, you know, your guys at a young age to understand it's just not going to be easy. It's not how it works. So understanding that and embracing that is really important.
well, just you and me. I know, I know. <laughs> Eddie's Eddie's uh, fueling up for the second half, but uh, just that conversation with Jason, and you can you can really feel it of uh, the excitement with this team, and, and what he said, he's ready to get back to work. Yeah, I, I think mean, everyone yeah. is. Yeah. everyone is, and it, it all starts today, but the the real work starts tomorrow. But the thing that stood out to me, right when I turned out, you saw me. I was talking to you guys, and then I saw him come. And come I was and like, Mark, we need you to yeah, stop Mark, talking shut right up. now. <laughs> Let the big man say. And I turned. I mean, he looks big. Yeah, he's definitely he looks big. Put on I mean, weight. he said he put on 11 pounds during the off season, but he looks big and strong, and that is a dangerous thing for opponents. Last season, Jason Tatum set a career high in a, in and ones completed. That's 50. I would not be surprised with that strength that that goes up to 60, 75 this season, and that's a big play for him, being able to finish through contact around the rim. That changes things for Boston offensively when he can score in that fashion. And just to, I mean, the dedication that he did put in this offseason, we've been seeing this, and I, I really like it, but uh, Jalen Brown and Derek White, they were with Paul Pierce and KG yeah. taking in the USC Colorado game, and then he's working out with Pierce. Just kind of the legends coming back and setting that foundation for the younger guys too. I mean, that's that's really special to yeah, see. And I can say, so Paul came on our podcast last season, shameless plug, View from the Rafters last season. You can listen to the episode with Paul Pierce, but he came on and he specifically spoke about wanting to kind of bridge that gap between that team and this team. He, he, he legitimately wanted to get to know Jason and Jalen and establish these relationships. And he said that he was even talking to Kevin Garnett about that, saying, hey, KG, like, we we got to put ourselves out there. We got to come back to Boston more often. We've got to put in the time to establish and grow these relationships and put your money where your mouth is. Like Paul Pierce did that this off season, right? He, he, you just heard it right from the horse's mouth. Like Jason Tatum was with Paul Pierce pretty much the whole offseason working out. Paul was putting in the work, lost a bunch of weight. I mean, well, he said he was really, really out of it, shape. It, <laughs> and so now he's well, in, now he's in shape, yeah. right? Now he's in shape. I bet you he could come back and score 10 or 15 points if we needed it. But no, that I, I appreciate the fact that these two guys, KG and Paul, are putting in the effort to establish and grow these relationships and kind of bridge that gap between these two teams that at this point are 15 years apart from when that last championship mm -hmm. got won. Well, we're going to look at some schedule highlights just, I mean, from what you've seen with the Celtics schedule, Mark, games that maybe stand out to you um, or ones that you've had highlighted on your calendar. Well, I can tell you a couple that are highlighted right now, and that's two matchups with the Bucks. the first of which you can see here, November 22nd, uh, when Dame and Giannis will take on this new revamped Celtics lineup. It's going to be a great matchup. I think everyone out there thinks that it's a it's a two-horse race in the Eastern Conference with Boston and Milwaukee, and that's going to be our first opportunity to really figure out how these two teams stack up. Then you look at opening night. We got uh, first game at the Knicks, and then right after that, two days later, we're taking on that Heat team that we really have a distaste for. Do you have a distaste for the Heat? Because I know I do. Oh, yes. After these definitely. past couple seasons. Yes. It's just been growing. I mean, it, it might be the best rivalry in terms of Eastern Conference that we've got in the NBA right now. And so I'm excited for that. Obviously, for the first time on Christmas Day, we're playing in L.A. against LeBron and the Lakers, so that should be fun. But a lot of great games on the schedule. And what I noticed and when I was doing my schedule breakdown when it came out is they're really spread out across the whole season. Uh, we, we've got more of the good ones at home during the second half of the season. But you look at the whole totality of the schedule, there's a lot of good games every single month of the calendar. Let's also talk about the in-season tournament. I know some people are excited, some people aren't. I, I, I know, I, I, but just can you break that down for us of just how that's going to look? I know that there's a lot of moving parts as well, but I think we have a graphic that we can put up for it. Yeah, but. absolutely. I mean, in-season tournament, I, I'm excited for it. I know you and I have talked about this before, but I'm excited about this because it just adds a new element to what we've gotten used to in the NBA, right? It, it's been an 82-game season every single year. Now we've got something new and exciting to look forward to and you see Boston's schedule right here uh, what we're going to see is the 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 games that are going to be played on Tuesdays and Fridays in November are the ones that count toward the in-season tournament. And then three teams from each conference, depending on their win-loss schedule from their uh, their play-in games here, are going to come out and be the winners of their groups. Then there's going to be one wild-card winner from each conference. So four teams from each conference move on to the quarterfinals. They're going to match up. We don't know who that team's going to be that the Celtics are going to play there in, uh, in early December, but... We're looking forward to that. And then the winners of that actually go out to Vegas this year for the semifinals and the finals. And this will be the first time 
an actual regular season game will be played in Las Vegas. We've only you and I have been out there for summer league. <laughs> We're talking the real deal. We're talking the real deal. And listen, I said put your money where your mouth is. The NBA has done that because every player on the winning team is getting an extra 500k in their pocket. Okay, and that's not chump change. I guarantee you, anyone in the NBA is going to want that 500 grand. So the the losing team, second place team, gets 250 grand per per player. But those guys are going to want that money. And I'm looking mm -hmm. forward to seeing all the excitement around it. I think the players are excited. And again, it just getting back to what I started out saying. It just changes things up, right? Like we've gotten used to the 82 game schedule. Schedule, and this throws a nice little fun wrinkle in there mm -hmm. that's got a lot of money on the line, right. too. Well, you look to the Celtics, I mean, just this offseason, adding two new assistant coaches, um, Sam Castle and also Charles Lee. Just your, I mean, background on them and maybe what they can bring to this Celtics team. Yeah, I mean, you look at both of them. Both of them, they both have championship experience. Sam Cassell won a, game, won a championship here. He's been an assistant for a long time under Doc Rivers at a, few, at a couple different stops. Um, and listen, I've, I've gotten to meet Sam a couple times. He's come on the podcast before. I just spoke to him a couple weeks ago. He's just chill, man. He's, he's good energy. Um, he's never going to get too riled up. We got someone who could talk about him right now. Eddie, we're talking about Sam Cassell right now mm -hmm. uh, and what he brings to the table. But he's, he's always going to be even keeled, and he really knows the game at both ends. This guy's won multiple championships in the NBA as a point guard. And the one thing that stood out to me when I talked to him a couple weeks ago is he said, let's not concentrate on this champion, championship, championship, championship every single day. He said, let's just concentrate on the day to day. Let's win today. Let's win tomorrow when that day comes and not concentrating on that championship at the end of the season every day but instead concentrating on right now what, what are your takeaways from your relationship with Sam and what he's going to provide to this coaching staff well Sam is respected by every player um, anybody he's played with or anybody that he's coached you they got are, some food no I'm oh, just joking oh, oh. <laughs> don't play with me because I got this beard I'm like oh I got the but, no, he's respected by the players, and I think that that's one thing that he's going to bring here. He's, he brings not only his championship pedigree, but he's played here and won a championship. He's been in deep playoff runs as a coach on the bench. He's been around the from the old school to the new generation. I think he's that, that bridge where, okay, he could bridge old school to the new school and – don't turn off the youngsters, you know, where they not listening to him. I think that he'll be that voice, <clears throat> that second voice, because they're going to listen to Joe, right? But that second voice of experience, you know, he, I, I think it's, it's a perfect mix for, for what we got going on. And, and then, then well, moving Charles, on to Charles Lee, yeah, yeah I the mean, experience with the Bucks and also working with Drew Holiday. Mm -hmm. Well, that's important right there. You know, having a working relationship already with Drew Holiday, it's going to probably make Drew a lot more comfortable coming in. Because when you don't go to from one team to another, it is a a, a little bit of a, a, a An adjustment, adjustment and getting used to people around, getting knowing people's names. If you have a familiar face in in that crowd, it always makes that transition a little bit seamless and a little bit more easier and comfortable to do so I think and and just his experience of being championship team being on teams that make deep runs into the playoffs and things like that so it's, it's a, I thought they did a great job hiring the right people um, moving forward for the season a little bit more about Charles Lee I mean you look around the league there's 30 teams there's probably at least four or five assistant coaches on every one of those teams so let's call it a pool of 150 assistant coaches in the league Charles Lee is at the very top of that. Like, he, he is knocking on the door of a head coaching job, okay? So if you're, you're talking about adding, and Sam Cassell is in the same conversation, okay? So you've, you're adding two guys who the rest of the league regard to be maybe two of the top ten assistant coaches in the entire league that are now working under Joe, who was also, before he became the head coach, regarded as one of the top assistants in the league. So just a stacked coaching staff, and, and Joe is excited about this. He, he reached out to both of them to bring them here. He wanted them on his staff, and, and I think they're both going to accentuate what the Celtics are trying to accomplish at both ends of the court this year. Eddie, I want to talk to you just about when you were, you know, having the conversation with Al Horford about just being in the league for as long as he has, but also, oh, we have Derek White. We'll, we'll get back to that. I didn't know that was you. D. White. <laughs> we got a mic coming in for you. <laughs> Great to see you. I like the look. Change, I like the new look. things up with yeah. the hair. I like Something the new look. Different. New look, new year, right? <laughs> yeah, that's us. That's us. You. <laughs> How have the guys responded to the to the hair? Uh, they've been good. Yeah, uh, everybody's been 
been liking it. Uh, I was just really was worried what JT thought about it, and he liked it super so good. Oh, well, then you're you're great. Yeah. You, got the, you got the approval. That's all I needed. <laughs> <laughs> the approval from JT, that's important. When did you do it? Uh, I did it like a couple weeks after the season ended. Yeah. Yeah. Was you tired of them talking about your hairline? Was that what it was? <laughs> <laughs> nah. I, I was actually going to do it regardless, but now everybody on Twitter thinks they're the reason. So <laughs> Twitter needs a win, so we'll give it to them. Don't give them credit. We'll give it to them. Hey, do you guys know this, his backstory? Like, so I called, one of his, I called his game at Colorado, right? And Coach Tab Boyle, fantastic coach, great job, does a great job over there at Colorado. So I called one of his games. It, uh, it was their senior year, I believe it was. And I'm like, who is this kid? He came out of nowhere. Because I did a lot of games where yeah. it wouldn't be a pro on the yeah. court. And I was like, this kid's a pro. Yeah. And so they said, where did you go, come from? What did you go to school for originally? Uh, I went to the University of Colorado, Colorado Springs. Uh, D2 in Colorado Springs. Originally it's, to do what? It, it, it's not a culinary school. Okay. That was the, the myth was that it was a culinary okay. school. But I was getting recruited by Johnson & Wills, and that was a culinary school. Okay, so that's how the and story then, goes. That but, coach left and went to UCCS, so that, that's where the confusion was. Okay. I, I probably should have went to the culinary school. So I can't cook for nothing. No, you did the right thing. You, <laughs> you did the right you thing. You can hire your own cook now. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Definitely, definitely have and needed to. I hear Luke Cornett's actually a really good cook. Has she? Has he cooked for you guys? You know, Luke. Luke had like baked some sweets from time to time last season, and they were elite. I so. heard I'm he's sure really good. Yeah. <laughs> he, he could be taking credit. Yeah, I don't know. I wouldn't put it past him. I wouldn't. I wouldn't either. <laughs> How excited are you about right now? About this season, getting ready to get started. I mean, are, are you got to? Are you feeling it? Yeah, yeah. It's always the first day is always exciting, but um, I mean, I love the the group that we have here. Um, obviously, adding KP and Drew is going to be uh, big additions for us, and um, I've been excited all summer. I'm uh, just ready to get back at it. For a minute there, a couple months, you lost your backcourt dog, right? Like on the defensive side, like you and Marcus Smart. No one wants to play against that backcourt. Now you get a new dog coming in now, Drew Holiday. I mean, how excited are you about what you two can accomplish defensively against these opposing teams? I guarantee no one out there wants to play against you guys right now. Yeah, I mean, Drew's been one of the best defenders in the league for uh, his whole career. And, I mean, I'm just looking forward to, to getting out there and competing with him, um, one of the best competitors in the league. So um, it's going to be a big challenge for us each and every night. And um, I'm going to learn a lot from Drew and hopefully uh, – It'll add up, add up some wins. That being said, day before training camp is when this goes down, right? Um, how do you guys kind of adjust on the fly now that everything, not everything, but a lot changed yesterday, the day before you guys get together for the first time? How do you adjust on the fly? Yeah, um, I mean, I think everybody uh, spoke so highly about Drew mm -hmm. and um, the kind of teammate he is. So um, I think we're going to adjust pretty quickly with him. And um, KP's been here for a couple of weeks now. And just playing with him and, and getting to know him has been cool. So um, just adding those two special talents is going gonna, gonna to do a lot for our team. And I mean, we even added, like, O'Shea Brissett and Lamar. Like, those are going to be big additions for us, too. And um, we're pretty deep from top to bottom. No question. I'll let you go. Oh, OK. Well. This is the other thing. I was thinking about end of the game situation. What are teams going to do with this? You, Drew, <laughs> Jason Tatum, JB, and Porzingis or Al out there? What, I said put Porzingis out there. What, 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 how do you think teams are going to react? What can they do? What do you think they could do? <laughs> Nothing, right? Yeah, I mean, we'll have to figure <laughs> it out. But uh, um, I mean, we got a lot of different weapons, a lot of, a lot of guys that have done great things in this league so far so um i think it's gonna be fun for you for us uh, you never know who will be night in or night out um and i think everybody's just gonna be unselfish with it and um know what's best for the team and so like last year the defense kind of took a step back i thought from the previous year the offense was came out the gates blazing but with you guys defensive versatility i think if and J, jason jt spoke about it he was talking about you guys are going to focus on defense. You want to be a great offensive team, too, but you want to be the best defensive team. But you guys' defensive versatility. You have yourself. You have Drew. Jason, uh, JT was talking about he wants to be all NBA. I, we haven't talk, I haven't talked with Jalen yet, so I'm going to ask him that same question. With that mentality, 
how excited are you about that versatility and being able to go out and night in, night out, knowing? Because I played on the team in 08, but we knew we was locking things down, period, yeah, as yeah. a team. You know, you had your dog in the back, but we was locking things down as a team. It was going to make it rough. How excited are you about knowing that that's on the forefront, that's on the horizon for you guys? Yeah, I mean, that's important for us. Um, Every team that's won a championship and uh, competed for a championship has been a, a good defensive team. And so uh, with the guys we have on this team, the, the different versatility that we can do and, and throw out there, um, that's got to be the mindset we have day in and day out. And uh, whether you make shots, miss shots, like we can always, you can always guard, you can always defend, and, and that gets you a chance to win each and every night. So um, that's a big part for us this season. And um, I mean, we got our guys like JT and JV talking like that. Like it's, it's going to be big for us and everybody's just going to fall in line with that. We just saw some B-roll there of you blocking shots. Led the league among guards last season in block shots. What is it about you and the way you play defense that leads to block shots? Because last season, well, not last season, but the one before that, you were second in the league among guards. So you're always at the very top. Why? Um, I don't know. I mean, I've always kind of blocked shots my whole career. Um, I mean, going back to my D2 days, I was like second in the RMAC and block shot. So um, it's kind of always what I've done is like part of my game. And um, I mean, I'm not afraid to jump or anything. So I um, just got to go out there and get a stop any way I can. I'm going to answer it for him, though, because he's that's the humble answer. He got great instincts. He has the ability to understand where the ball is going to be at, right? He can stay and guard his own yard. And like he said, he's not scared to jump. And he's a hell of a defender. So that's what you could say, man. <laughs> let, it, let it out. You, know, you ain't got to be modest out here, bro. Too, so <laughs> and you, can, you have great timing. Great at trailing without fouling, which is key and difficult in the NBA. Um, do we want to pull up the question? We got a Twitter question. We'll do one. That's going to be fun. We'll do one, one Twitter question for you. This is our first of the day, so this is a special moment. Do we got that coming up here, Max? Okay, here we go. All right. From Elijah, Elijah uh, for D. White. Does the new haircut give you some more speed and agility, or is it just for the looks? I hope it makes me a little faster, jump a little <laughs> higher. I'll, I'll take any, any benefit that I can get from it. Um, Man, I, I had that dunk that went viral on, on Twitter, but it was talking about it. So um, hopefully it makes me a little faster, more aerodynamic, <laughs> that's for sure. So uh, I'll take all the benefits I can get. We're looking forward How's to that. How's your son doing? He's good. Yeah, he's running around crazy, but it, it's, been, it's been fun. <laughs> and another one on the way? Yeah, yeah I got one on one. Congratulations. Due in November, so it's going to Oh, my gosh, quick just here. in time. Boy, girl. <laughs> another boy. And so it's going to be two soldiers. boys taking over the house and um, pray for my wife. Yeah, God bless your soul trying to get some sleep during the middle of the NBA season having a baby. Oh, my goodness. Hey, one more question for you uh, before we let you go. Um, last season, your three-point percentage jumped 7.5%. That's the biggest jump in your career. What's the key to maintaining that? Just because your spacing that you provided for the team last year was so critical to the offense, how do you keep that up there? Yeah, um, I mean, I think that was just another thing I was focused on again this offseason, just um, consistent with the shot day in and day out. Um, obviously, with JT, JB, uh, now KP and, and Drew, like, I'm going to get good looks, and I just got to be ready to go and knock them down when I get them and um, space the floor for them and, and try to make their lives a little easier. Did you change your shot or do anything from when you first got here? Uh, you know, we went to the finals. We didn't win the finals. But the next season, it looked like you were getting the ball off quicker. Was that something that you had focused on and you continue to focus on that? Catch and shoot, understanding that how you're going to get your shots and where you're going to get your shots. Have that understanding. Does that help you with your quick release? And, and is that something that you worked on? Yeah, I mean, I, I I feel like that first my first year with Boston, I was thinking too much, uh, and so I was just focused on just catching it and letting it fly. And I um, mean, my whole teammates, the coaching staff were empowering me to to shoot the shots, and and so just if I got a good look, just just let it fly and um, try to stay in it, not fade back and stuff like that. But um, just don't think and let it let it fly and get a good shot up there. So I want to ask, uh, JB's right over here. You guys were over, or you went to the Colorado USC game. We're in the suites. He said you made him do the wave. It was is that true? <laughs> <laughs> and and KG and Paul Pierce were there too. That's yeah. amazing. Yeah, it's 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 good times out there in Boulder right now. <laughs> um, Not as good as it was a few weeks ago, but yeah, hey, it's still great times. By the way, <laughs> Boulder is a great city. I don't know if you guys I, ever been. I never been. I, I bet, love yeah, Boulder. It's beautiful. Yeah, it's pretty. Yeah. You got to come out. Yeah, uh, it's the place to be right. Now, um, 
what Prime's doing with that team is amazing. Um, I was excited when JB said he wanted to go to the game, and um, he's a Buff fan now. He's a diehard Buff fan his whole <laughs> life now, and uh, we're happy to have him. And obviously with uh, KG and, and Paul being there too, it was just good to see see everybody. Did yeah. you have to hit Prime up for tickets, or did you call your connection? <laughs> I, I still went to the men's basketball program. Okay. <laughs> I got to stay with who I'm, I'm with, you know. I watched them. They had a little inner squad jersey for the game, so I went and watched them, and I'm excited. Excited for that, How they that year. I'm excited for them. Okay. Uh, they got they got like some good pieces and we're gonna be good this year. So I'm excited for all Colorado in general. What's your feeling on moving to the Big Twelve? It's gonna be weird. Um, obviously we were in the Big Twelve before, yeah. but mm -hmm. um, obviously I have some familiarity with that, but um, I'm looking forward to it. There's a lot of great teams in, in the Big 12. I mean, I, I love the Pac-12, so it's going to be a little different. I'm really sad about the Pac-12. I am too. Like, so that Oregon is just, well, yeah, we so, both are. We're, yeah. yeah. I'm like, yeah. man, I can't believe And then the football. Back to pack. The, yeah, back to pack. <laughs> but this year, the football teams are all doing really great. Good, yeah. The yeah. best season they had, and they're all just getting dismantled. Yeah. And it's too tough as to last year. Yeah, yeah, it's crazy, yeah. man. I'm just wondering what they're going to do with my records. Like, if there's no Pac-12, like, well, okay, what what happens? You, do I just I, get lost in the shuffle? Uh, no, I'll tell you exactly what. You're going to have them forever. I know I'm going to have but I'm, of course, because nobody <laughs> – but I, don't, I still think that I'm going to have one of those records forever. It's not going to get – that 61. Love it. That ain't getting broke. <laughs> That's tied with Kareem, Abdul-Jabbar, Lou Alcindor of the time. Humble brag. <laughs> That's impressive. Yes. Yeah, I don't think that's getting broken. No, nah, that's not going to get touched. <laughs> yeah, I don't think so. Um, it all starts up tomorrow. What's the tone that you guys are trying to set from day one of training camp? Uh, I mean, we just talking about like we, we know what the end goal is, but we can't uh, focus on that. Uh, we got to have a great regular season. And I mean, that starts game one, just bringing that same uh, attitude and mentality each and every game. We can't have those ups and downs that uh, kind of we had last year that uh, throughout the year. So um, no matter who the opponent is, no matter what team it is, we got to be ready to go and um, show that we're, what team we think we are. Jordan Wall said he's been going up against you one on one so far. He's learned a lot. But uh, how has that been? And have you been giving him Fried any chicken? advice? <laughs> <laughs> you mean frying him? Uh, <laughs> hey man, he, he's a he's a good kid. Um, <laughs> yeah, hey, hey, for everybody, hey, for everybody nice out guy. there, for everybody out there, what he just meant that he's a good kid. He's been cooking him. <laughs> he's been giving him a lesson. That's what's no, been happening. Yeah. Well, I, I'm excited for him. Uh, he's gonna learn a lot this season. Um, and he's willing to learn, so it's, it's going to be – it's great having him here. And, um, I mean, I remember when I was a rookie, like, everything happened so quick, especially in the, so uh, quick after the draft. So um, I'm, I'm happy for how he's been getting better each and every day, and we got a good one. Certainly sounds like everyone's been putting in the work. Yeah. We're looking forward to it. Yeah, it's been All a right. good summer. Derek, we appreciate the time. Thanks, D. Yeah, can't appreciate wait to you guys. Ga game one on Sunday. It's crazy. I can't even believe yeah. we're saying that. But Beautiful. good luck this season. We'll be there for every step of the way, man. We appreciate it. All right. Good to see you appreciate guys again. You too. Thank you. All right, tonight at 8 p.m., catch a special media day edition of Celtics Post Up on NBC Sports Boston. Amina Smith, Brian Scalabrini, Eddie House, and Chris Forsberg have the best interviews of the day and preview the upcoming season. It's presented by Eastern Propane and Oil. They're in your neighborhood. So he can shoot it. It's crazy. One of the best shooters I've seen. What a play by Hauser. Hauser gets another one. Professional man of leisure from the three-point line. Outside. Yes, sir. That's what he's in there for. Man, he is automatic out there. You know, I'm happy for him. I'm happy he's just getting the opportunity. And uh, he's obviously making the most out of it. We're going to need him. He's going to play a role for this team this year. Honestly, I think it goes back to my parents. They've uh, instilled it in myself, my brother, and my sister to just work hard, give your best, and um, just be respectful of others. From a young age, I kind of just stuck my nose down and 
whatever sport I was playing, I used to play a lot of sports growing up. Um, you know, I was gonna give it my best and do the best I can at whatever I was told to do. So I think it started from an early age, but um, credit due to my parents on that one. got out to Boston, it was kind of a culture shock, coming from a small town in, in the Midwest, in Wisconsin, um, going back and forth from, from the G League to Boston, kind of the first part of the year. And it's definitely, that's a true grind, being a two-way. You're back and forth all the time, you hardly get to rest. That type of thing is, it's just crazy. It takes a lot out of you, it's draining, but um, it's all worth it. I mean, if, especially, you know, in my position, it, it worked out, you know, you put the work in, do your best in the game, show up that you can have value with the big club and um, maybe you'll get your chance. He can shoot. You know what I'm saying? You can shoot, bro. Real well. You know, Sam can shoot. I mean, I tell him all the time. Is he a better shooter than you? Hell no. I tell him all the time, if I was that wide open, if people left me that wide open and all I had to do was catch and shoot, uh, I wouldn't make a lot of, I would make a lot more shots as well. Did you hear him say that or did you <laughs> later on the clip that you saw it? Or? Yeah, I saw the clip. Uh, yeah, you know, he claims he's a better shooter than me, but you know, I, I don't think he thinks that's true. We'll see it, you know, we'll see. It. If it's me, great. If it's someone else, great. But, you know, I'll be ready if my number's called throughout the season. I'll be ready for my opportunities. I'm just really excited uh, for the season to get going, and hopefully I can show that I can have value on this team and, and play off of these guys really well. And, you know, this is a dream of mine growing up as a little kid shooting on my mini hoop. I always wanted to be in the NBA, and it took a lot of time and effort in the gym, and a lot of shots were, were put up with my brother, my dad, my sister, my mom. and for it to all kind of come to fruition. And it's been pretty cool. It's been a pretty cool journey, but definitely never take it for granted because there's a lot of people who would love to trade places with, with me, but um, gotta continue to put the work in every day. So I, hopefully I can stick here and um, stay in the NBA. Well, Jalen Brown is with us now, and uh, JB, a lot happened this offseason for this Boston Celtics team, also for you, the mm -hmm. last 24 hours, but getting the opportunity now to be joined by Drew Holiday, just your reaction to that news when you heard and when you found out? A little bittersweet. I mean, obviously, Rob and Malcolm are two really good friends of mine, you know, Malcolm being from the same hometown and, and Rob just being like, you know, with him for so long. It's like, you know, going through like high school and middle school kind of with somebody been six years. It's like somebody that you've grown with, you learn with. So for him no longer to be around, it's, it's, initial reaction is things a little bit, but you know, it's, it's life. I know those guys are going to kill it where they're at. And uh, I welcome Drew. Drew is a, an assassin. He's a, a killer. Somebody that I got to play against in the playoffs and I've guarded, he's guarded me. Um, so, you know, true competitor, a lot of respect for him. You talked about him guarding you. I want to know what your take is on what he brings to the table defensively and why is he so good at that end, end of the floor? Yeah, he like he like plays with like a force that people don't necessarily understand. Like certain players, you know, have like, you know, just a, a force or gravity about them. You know what I mean? Especially when the game is on the line in the playoffs, his will, his relentlessness, you know, he can he can really push his team and propel his team forward. Um, that like some other players don't possess, you know, um, Drew has that that energy level that like when he when he wants to win and he's all in, it could be it can be hard to beat a man like that. Can we get something out there right now just before we keep Go going? Ahead. What's it feel like to be the longest tenured Boston Celtic? <laughs> is that insane? It is. I can't believe that that is true and real. It's crazy. Yeah, man, I'm getting old. That's what that means. <laughs> no, that means we're getting old. So I asked JT this. When you are at the top, you guys, all NBA players, pretty much can do everything out on the court. 
What specifically did you focus on this summer that you felt like, hey man, I know I'm, I know I'm really, really, really good, but there are some things that I feel that I'm deficient in and I need to attack that. What was one of those things or a few, well, what was those things that you attacked, if any? It was really everything. I think sort of how I've always approached growth is, you know, just look in the mirror and try to, try to get better and push yourself. So I push myself at everything. It's probably the hardest I worked in the summer, you know. And that's saying a lot. Right. So You get better every year. Exactly. So I'm excited. I'm excited. You know, there was a lot of talk around, you know, how we ended the season. And, you know, I'm ready to come out and show the world that, you know, when I can get a whole lot better. And two, um, I ain't played my best basketball yet. It was another question I asked JT as well. I asked him, does he plan on trying to be an all NBA defensive player to make that team? And his answer was absolutely. Same question to you. Same answer. Um, I think, you know, in different spots, you know, we've always had pretty good defensive teams. You know, some even great, you know, we've had on the defensive side of the ball. And we all share responsibility in certain roles. And sometimes that, you know, can create a little bit of a comfort, you know. But, uh, you know, this year, this summer, I plan on challenging myself more throughout the season um, to, to, to take on more challenges, meet more guys at the rim, make more plays on the defensive side of the ball that I know I'm capable of, you know, not just doing it in the playoffs or doing it when, you know, I'm asked of it, just doing it more often. I think I could be one of the better defenders in the, in the, in the game today, you know, so just trying to challenge myself to be better, push myself to be more. Um, so I'm looking forward to that as well. And I know Jason is looking forward to that too. The thing that stands out to me about that conversation is you made that comment on your own with a comment on Instagram that you want to make all defensive team. Jason did it unprovoked in an interview that he gave to the messenger. These guys saying this on their own, right? Like you just asked a question, but they said it on their own. Like you guys want to get out there and defend at a high level. Why do you think that is necessary to get you guys? And not, that's not to say that you guys haven't already. You have. Like we all know that you guys wouldn't be a great defensive team if you both weren't great. But why is it so important to you guys to getting over the hump for you two to be elite defensive players this season? I think defense is something that, you know, is so important in our game, but doesn't necessarily get always highlighted. I think right now, through media, through you know what's celebrated is what your offensive ability is. So sometimes you pay less attention to what's going on on defense. Even our better players in the game, you know, we don't even talk about you know their defensive you know liabilities or whatever the case may be. You know, we don't look at that as like a whole game. It's two sides to the ball, and you know, as you get older and you start to realize about the game of basketball, there's a lot of different ways you can affect winning. And you know, challenging yourself on the defensive side of the ball is always going. Um, it's always going to help a team win, right? So setting the tone for our team, setting the tone going forward. You know, I think, you know, and me and Jason, we talked. We haven't talked about it together. I think we just both was on the same type of time. Like, mm -hmm. we both want to just push ourselves and be better and, and be the best we possibly can be on both ends, not just on offense but on defense too. And like, I'm willing to accept that challenge, and I know he as well. This offseason, you signed the largest contract in, in NBA history. Just, congratulations. Yes, congratulations, congratulations again. And we'll get into that. But just what does that do for the NBA as a league and as a whole in general of just being able to pay players and for what they're worth? I think it does a lot. I think uh, the NBA is continuing to expand. The global knowledge in the game. I think the initiatives of the NBA have been, you know, well partaken. The game is going to continue to get bigger. Different parts of the world, you can see it spreading now. So um, to be able to, to compensate players according to the growth of the game makes a lot of sense. Also, like to be able to include retired players and players that help push the league to where it is at now, finding some type of means of income for them, like even participating in the Big Three, um, was a part of that. So. You know, the NBA has grown a lot, and the players have a lot to do with that. Um, so I think the players should be, you know, compensated accordingly. And I'm, for you, oh, well, oh, go ahead. No, I was go just going to say for you personally, what does it mean that to know that the Celtics are invested in you long term and, and really building around you? Um, it feels great. At the same time, it's a lot of work, a lot of work. So, you know, this summer, you know, I, I've been preparing my body, my mind, and, and everything to to take on whatever challenge is necessary. You know, obviously, you know, when you do historic things, it's, you know, it's, history is expected from you. 
So I'm excited to help lead my team as far as we can possibly go. I'm ready to win. I'm ready to challenge. I'm ready to lead. And it's, it's, it's great being here. Yeah, the, the most encouraging thing about talking to the two leaders on the team, right, you and Jason, is the fact that you guys are saying you're willing to embrace the challenge of being the best defenders that you could be and trying to chase down an all-NBA defensive team. Well, that's going to be a trickle-down effect, and it starts tomorrow with you guys. I mean, you guys set that tone, and, you know, Drew's going to come in and do his thing, set his tone, and, you know, Derek's going to do what he does. And now you're talking about you guys adding that and just the defensive versatility that you guys will be able to have. I think that in itself is going to – make you guys successful. If that's the mentality, because what's going to happen, you guys are going to get stops. You guys are going to get turnovers, which leads to more possessions. And you guys are super talented on the offensive end, which is going to cause a lot of problems for other teams. So I'm excited and encouraged about the fact that you guys, as the leaders, are taking it upon yourself to say, hey, we're going to, this is how we're going to do it. And again, it, you guys are talking about it, and I, I know that you guys are going to be about it. And it starts tomorrow. And you're going to have to bring all the other guys with them. You know, uh, Peyton, you know, the second unit, going to have to challenge you guys. And you guys have to challenge them to challenge you. They have to challenge you guys to challenge them. And that's how you guys are going to be able to win a championship is that not, day in and day out, you guys are working with each other, building each other up, and getting the, the, best, the best out of each other. Squeeze out every little drop that you guys could get out of each other. That's how you guys are going to win this championship. Yes, sir. This is knowledge drop right here. Amanda and I are just like, here, no, this is great stuff. This is great stuff. But in, in alluding to what Eddie is talking about right there is kind of like more of a leadership opportunity. I think Brad has spoken about that publicly that, you know, you're the longest tenured Celtic now. Marcus, unfortunately, is no longer with the team. But that does open up an opportunity for you and Jason to have even more of an influence from a leadership perspective. Why do you embrace that? And, and what is your leadership style? Because I know you and Jason are not the guys that are screaming in the locker room or screaming on the court. That's not how you guys do it. So what's your leadership style? I don't know. I might, you might see me. Yeah? All right. Let's <laughs> go. Uh, this year. It might be a little different this year. <laughs> All right. Uh, no, I don't, I don't mind. You know, I, I always want to go with the flow of the team. You know, so we've, we've always had a lot of voices kind of going on in the locker room. And even last year, we had Grant, Blake, Smart, all very vocal guys. So, you know, you don't always want to overstep or, or say too much. But, you know, I think this year we got more, you know, quieter guys. So I think there is a, a, some room for some voices to speak up. And I don't mind being one of them. We're looking forward to that. When I see you scream on the court or in there, I hear about it in the locker room. I'm going to oh, he told us. <laughs> he told us. He hinted. And sometimes, you know, it, it, it doesn't take that, like what he's saying. It doesn't take – it's example. I, I'll tell you what, KG was very vocal, right? And, but the one thing about it, when we came to practice, he's already in the fools. I'm coming mm -hmm. late dragging, right? I'm coming in thinking I'm, you know, eight years in. I'm a vet, and I see – the best play, one of the best players in the world, fully drenched in sweat. Now, what that does is put a foot in my, I kick myself in the ass. Like, oh, you know, I got to go, man. How can I, I can't let him down. Like, look, he's not going to let me down. I can't let him down. And so sometimes it's not even, you don't have to be boisterous. You don't have to be vocal. You, your actions can, can speak volumes, volume. So I think it's, it's many different ways to lead. It doesn't have to be, Rob, but you'll, you'll find out. You know when you're going to have to step on somebody's, you know, those cross that line and say, hey, we got to get it going. And you'll know when your example is, is, is the leadership that they need at that point. So it's a fine line to, to, to balance, but I know you up for it, man, and you're going to do a great job in that role. Yes, sir. One more thing that I want to talk to you about that we haven't gotten a, a lot of player perspective on today is the new coaching staff. You've got Sam Cassell in, you've got Charles Lee in. These are two guys who have won championships. Um, what stands out to you about those two guys uh, and them being combined with uh, Joe Mazzulla in the top of the staff? I think it's great. It adds some like veteran presence to our, our coaching staff. Uh, obviously, last year we had Damon, who was an older coach, but he ended up moving on to Georgia Tech, which I'm excited for him in his jersey. But adding Sam, who one has been a Celtic, one as a Celtic, and now here having that veteran presence, I think is going to be great for us. Same thing with Charles, having that experience of winning. Um, already, they've both been very very, very vocal and already they've been straight shooters you know what I mean they don't always have to agree with you or the coaching staff they're gonna get a perspective and I think that adds to the value of our group you know we don't need anybody like you know treading any waters or anything like that we all in this together so to have that transparent trans uh 
what's the word I'm looking for? Transparency. Transparency. Yep. Yeah. Having that transparency amongst one another is going to be key. So we got to make sure we're on the same page. I, I, had, to, like I had to help you. That's my, that's my Arizona State University uh, <laughs> education. He jumped quick. He was really good. You're, you're talking to Cal right here, okay? Come on. <laughs> you know, I, did, I can't stand Cal. They didn't recruit me, man. Oh. Yeah, but I, I got nothing against him. That's the only reason why. I'm, I'm from the Bay Area. So I, my mom used to work at Cal. So oh, I, I didn't used to know go. That. I used to go to that campus when I was a little kid and walk around and like imagine I was gonna go there. Wow. They didn't send me a question. They didn't even send me. They didn't want to know what my favorite book was. <laughs> I was like, oh, You're man. You're still bitter. I am bitter. That's why I gave him 61. So that's it? Uh, yeah, that's why kidding. I gave it to him. Sheesh. 61. But, hey, that's what happens when you got a little motivation in your shoes, I know, right? right? I like that. I like that. Yeah, I had to help you out once. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, well, man, but you know what, though, really, though, talk about this, your versatility on defense. I don't think we hit on that yet. Talk about how excited you are or uh, are you anticipating how you guys can really cause some damage on the defensive end with all the versatility you got between Derek, between you, between uh, Drew, JT, and Porzingis or Al or whoever you throw in there, Pritchard. I mean, I think we got dogs from top to bottom on yeah, the defensive end. and I'm excited. I'm excited about the end of the ball because I was excited before the season, before we got Drew. Now it's like I'm even more excited. But at the same time, Other I'm teams like – teams are not. You know, <laughs> I, we ain't worried about them. We, yeah, it's, it's, <laughs> we focus on us. But I'm excited because, like, now it's like it's going to be a little competitive. Like, it's going to be nice with Drew. I'm going to be like, nah, I want it. Right. You know what I mean? So we got to get after it, and I want us to compete like that on the defensive end of the ball, but we can't just, you know, expect teams to see us and think that they're not going to try to go at us. We got to go out there and be on the hunt. Mm -hmm. and, I, and I'm looking forward to that. I'm looking forward to making guys uncomfortable. I'm looking forward to, you know, playing with some energy and some presence that, you know, for a duration of a season, which is, you know, sometimes harder to do and taking on an offensive burden. But, you know, getting your body in the right shape is a key to that. And this summer, that's what I've been focusing on, making sure my body has been able to do both at a high level for a longer period of time. Um, um, so I'm excited, man. I think we got, you know, a lot of options, a lot of opportunities, a lot of versatility. We can switch. We can go, you know, a big lineup, a small lineup. Mm -hmm. um, we can guard in a lot of different ways, even the young guys. We got guys that had just got introduced to the team, like Brissett and uh, Walker and Jordan Walsh, who are all hungry on the defensive end. Those are young three little dogs right there that nobody even talking about. And, and then, you know, we, we just excited, man. Like, we got a good group, and we got to make sure we take advantage of every opportunity. Somebody. Really does seem like there's a lot of energy coming out of the building. I mean, you guys had your first meeting with Joe this morning. It all starts tomorrow. What are you looking forward to most on day one? Day one, uh, focus, attention to detail, um, but also like, you know, a certain like assertiveness, a seriousness to it. Ain't, ain't nothing to joke about, ain't nothing funny about losing in the, in the conference finals or losing in the finals the year before. Um, so, yeah, we're going to have fun and it's going to be time for that. But, you know, this, this season, you know, we got to have that focus level from day one. Well, Kick the dough down. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> Kick the dough down. Yes, sir. JB, man, we appreciate you coming on. And I wasn't able to be there when you signed the contract. I was out of the country. But I want to say to you face-to-face, -face, congratulations. Man, you put in the work since day one. Since you've been here, you earn every dollar. And I can't wait to see what you guys accomplish this uh, year. I uh, appreciate you, my brother. All right. Yes, Thanks, JB. Yes, sir. Appreciate you guys. Uh, all right. The Celtics play their first preseason game on Sunday when they host the 76ers. Our coverage starts at 5.30 p.m. with Celtics pregame live. It's presented by TD Bank.
Hi, everyone, and welcome back. We have one more player. One more. I can't believe Uno this mas. has just gone Uno by mas. so fast today, but just getting the feel for the guys, the excitement, I feel like we're just ready to go tomorrow, too, That's to why start I went, a training camp. That's why it went by so fast. We're having fun. Guys are excited. Everybody in the building is excited. All the players are anticipating tomorrow. So it was just a lot of fun. You know, when you're having fun, time flies. Mm -hmm. And listen, there's, there's some media days where – they say that there's an extra, uh, like a heightened level of intensity and emotion and energy. And there's other years where, like, you know it's true. Like, it feels real this year. It feels like these guys cannot wait to get out on the court tomorrow and start this journey together. And I think that, like we were talking about earlier, Eddie, before Jason Tatum rudely sat down and interrupted my comment, um, <laughs> it starts from the top. And, like, ownership and Brad have committed to bringing in the top level talent to give this team a chance to win right now. We're not talking about next year in the year. We're talking about right now. And I think that has trickled down into the locker room of like, all right, boys, like it's time. Like we made it to the conference finals last year. We made it to the finals the year before. No, no, no. It's time to get over that hump now. Right. And not only did he bring in top tier talent, he brought in top tier coaching staff to help Joe Missoula, yep. you know, and so when you look at all of the moves that were made, they're all championship moves. They're all move, they're all geared under, with the understanding that the window is open and you have to seize the moment and take advantage of it and try to do everything you can to take advantage of it. And I think they, they didn't hold any stops. They did everything they could to, to make sure that this team was going to be the most competitive that they could put together. I think these guys have sat down here today, right? And obviously it's tough to lose Marcus Smart. It's tough to lose Rob Williams. These guys have long-lasting relationships with those two guys, but I think they've acknowledged, like, these moves have been to make us better. We are better today than we were at the end of last season, and there's nothing more that you can ask for from an organization than to be continuously trying to improve your roster. For the players, that's all they can ask for. For the fans, that's all they can ask for, and that's why everyone is so jacked up about the season. I'm ready for preseason game number one on Sunday. Sunday. Like, Sunday. I just want to see fast. what these guys look, look like together. So it's coming in hot. Well, and I'm excited to, I mean, we're not going to hear, unfortunately, from Drew Holiday today, but hopefully tomorrow mm -hmm. we'll be able to get a chance to talk to him, an opportunity Sometime to soon. just, Sometime yes, soon. in him coming to Boston, joining this team, and obviously what he wants to bring. But before we get Porzingis in here, Eddie, I was I was commenting on your interview with Al Horford mm -hmm. and just his time in the league and, and how he's kind of staying ready. And those moments, what you said when you hit January, February, <laughs> and you're not really sure days. how you're going to get through it and him having kind of just a way to work through it. How did you work through it? It when you were playing and, and when it got really tough? Well, I wasn't that – like, I was didn't play. I played 11 years. So, my last year – I didn't know it was my last year, actually. Um, just didn't get no more phone calls. But um, when, when you are in those dog days, it is – you have to find a way to psych yourself out because it does get monotonous. You know, the, the pregame meal, the same meal. You know, the, your sleep pattern, the same sleep pattern. And when you're driving to the arena, you're probably listening to the same music. So it gets kind of repetitive, not re it gets very repetitive. And so you have to try to trick yourself into getting your, and sometimes you go in that garden, it's freezing cold. So you were like, okay, how do I warm up now? You got to start tricking yourself. You know what? Whatever it is, mind games you could play. And I'll tell you who was the best at it was uh, KG. KG talked – people thought he was talking to other players a lot. A lot of that time, he's talking to himself. And he'll throw some stuff at somebody if he walked by him. But if he's over in his – he's – so he played a lot of mental games with himself mm -hmm. to get himself ready. And that's kind of what I, I piggybacked off of that. Like, oh, okay. Oh, that's how he – that's why he's always crazy and ready to go is because he's psyching himself out. And me coming off the bench, that's what – I would have to do things like that. You know, get warm, looking at the game, act like I'm in the game so I could be loose. I'm physically in the game, mean mentally into the game. So when I get in the game physically, I already know how it's going. I know who, what, what plays the call for people. I know where I'm going to get my shots. I know who's going to be trying to attack me and things like that. So it's, um, it's so many different ways that you could try to motivate yourself. And I think in itself with, with Al being going in his 17th year, I think that's motivation alone. Uh, you know, you got the championship and everything else that you're going to be focused on, but it, does, it is one day at a time. The championship is way down the road. 
You don't get there if you don't take care of each day. So uh, I, I'm, I'm, with, with Al, it's uh, very impressive. And I hope he gets 20, actually. Yeah, that would be awesome. There's not that many people I mean, that have it, right? make it to 20. Yeah. I mean, you, especially for a big man? Right. Like, almost never happens. One, one other thing that I want to ask you about, Eddie, is the, the establishment of relationships early on in training camp, because that's what these guys are about to do, right? Like, Chris Stapps is his first season here. <clears throat> Drew, it's his first season here. A bunch of the guys on the bench, first season here. Um, you told me a story one time about, I think, you and KG in the locker room, right, where you were like, you were like, no, this is how I get ready. You get yeah. ready for the game your way, I get ready for the game right. my way. How long does it take for all of the players in the locker room to, like, understand what makes everyone tick, to understand their ins and outs of who they are as players and people? It's quickly if you have communication. Mm -hmm. If somebody doesn't say anything and it just festers and bothers, and then it blows up into something bigger. But when KG said what he said to me, I said what I said, like, hey, well, this is how I get ready, though. You can't tell me how I'm supposed to get ready. But I respect your line over there. Mm -hmm. Respect my line. Okay, cool. Now, and that we move on. But I think the one thing about that 08 team that was unique and brought us together faster was we had to go to Italy. So we were forced to kick it with each other. Mm -hmm. You know, language barrier over there. You really can't talk to anybody. We, we were forced to hang out. I think seven or eight guys all shaved their head, bald. Um, and so we were forced to hang out. So we went to dinner together. We hung out, um, you know, just going out, being in a room, playing cards. And we created that camaraderie where when you're having a training camp that's at home, you come to camp and then you go home. Well, I thought that brought us together a whole lot faster because of the fact that we weren't, you know, we weren't at home when we were on the road. Big fella. We got a big seven Hello. foot Hello. Three Hello. forward coming What's down on, How are onto you? the set. What's up, Chris Dobbs? Good to see you, man. Good to see you again. We got a microphone for you, and here we go. I know. Amanda, take it first, away. First media Maybe day. How, how has today been going for you with your, with your new team? Uh, it's been good. It's been good so far. Uh, not my first one. First one here. No. Yes. First one here. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Certainly uh, not your first. Right. Uh, but yeah, it's been uh, going great, and I'm very excited. You told me uh, back in June after the introduction here um, that this was a place that you wanted to be. You wanted to be here and specifically because you want to win. But now that you have been here, mm -hmm. right, you've had some time to learn the guys out on the court over the last couple of weeks. You've had a chance to learn the organization a little bit. What are you liking about what you're seeing and what you're feeling and hearing? Uh, the energy is great here. Uh, obviously, uh, we all understand that uh, we have a goal. Everybody's brought in here for a goal. And, and just the thought of that itself, I think, just gives extra motivation to everybody to come up, uh, come, come here, go into the season, um, just ready to get to work, ready to get to work and, 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 and put that work in daily so we can get where we want to get to. Everyone that I've talked to in the organization who has been watching you work out and, and talk to you has told me that you, you come across as selfless. Like, you, you don't care what your numbers are going to. You want them to be great, obviously, because you want to be a great player. But as long as it's contributing to winning, that's all you care about. Uh, where did that mindset come from, and how has that developed throughout the course of your career? Yeah, honestly, I think it comes with age. You know, I've been around the league a little bit, and and at the end, uh, that's what matters is winning. If, if you put up, uh, I had uh, different opportunities to go somewhere else and maybe have a bigger role and, and maybe even make more money, but I wanted to come here. I wanted to come to Boston just because of the opportunity to play in such a uh, iconic organization with great players that are already here that are very close and and hopefully I can come in here and bring more to that and 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 that idea of that itself just uh, was I didn't need to hear anything else mm -hmm. and and now that I'm here it's you know it's a incredible feeling I like what I'm hearing you have been on different teams and different organizations and you just hit on it this is an iconic organization Talk about the difference that you've seen, because mm -hmm. I played in some bad organizations, and you could see the level just from top to bottom. Mm -hmm. Just talk about the organization itself and the people here, not only people that are on your team, the coaching staff, but also everybody else, all the staff that's involved. Talk about the organization. Definitely. I think it, uh, from the top down, just top-notch people, professionals, um, uh, I say uh, not uh, 
just just yeah just knowledgeable people that have made all of that uh, correct and and organized to everybody feels like they're valued in the organization and everybody's always giving their all and their best and and you can feel that you know i think everybody feels good being in this kind of environment and this kind of environment brings out the best out of people what, what would you say? I got some because I've talked to some people that played in this game, and when I was talking about what you br we were having a discussion, right? And I'm not going to say any names who I was talking to, but we were having a discussion, and I was I brought you up and was saying like what a great addition is going to be, and I was thinking about the offensive end, thinking about what you could bring, and their first thing they said was, well, he has never averaged 10 rebounds for in his career. Well, I don't think you're going to have to average 10 rebounds. I mean, you could go get them if you need. Talk about what you're going to bring to this team mm -hmm. on the defensive end mm -hmm. on that side of the ball. Because mm -hmm. we know what you could do offensively. I mean, you're yeah. unbelievable. Yeah. Thank you. I appreciate that. I think what has like went under the radar a little bit is the type of uh, defensive season I had last year. You know, I took a lot of pride in, in, in bouncing back from years that I wasn't as good defensively. Mm -hmm. Uh, because of different things and, and injuries, you know, and of course I worked my way back into that. And last season was was a really good defensive year also for me. And I look forward to bringing that to even a higher level here, you know. And, and offensively, as you said, I think we're gonna sooner or later we'll figure out how to play together and just hit that rhythm. And it's gonna be really really hard to stop us. But I think where we can get even better is each individually step it up defensively, and then as a unit, and then we'll be. At that different level. And talking about defense, Eddie, like he was one of the best in the league among all the bigs last season in pick and roll de defensive uh, ability and in, in the numbers there, what they showed. But a couple other numbers that I want to point out, I'm not sure if you know about this. You're the only player in NBA history who has averaged at least two made three pointers and at least 1.5 blocks per game in multiple seasons. How, how crazy Ooh. is that? The only, only player, player in NBA history, multiple threes in at least 1.5 mm -hmm. blocks per game mm -hmm. in the history of the NBA. Mm -hmm. I think we can all go through the Rolodex of players who have played in the NBA. You're the only one that's who's crazy. done it. What's that mean to you? Yeah, no, that's a... I did mean, you, you know could, that? I, I did not know that. Okay. That was the only one I did not know that. <laughs> but I think... It, I stumped him. Let's go. <laughs> but I think the game is changing, right? A lot more big shooting threes. So we're going to see more of that. I think maybe I, I'm just one of those first guys that was getting the blocks and already shooting, like, a lot of threes, right? So I think... Uh, I think it's only a matter of time. You know, we have Wemby coming into the league, all these young guys that are seven-footers shooting incredible from outside and blocking shots and so on. So, yeah, it's, uh, but that's, uh, you know, but, you know, the stats are, you can always pull something out and kind of be, oh, this is <laughs> no, the first man, guy. Own, no, history. own that one, own yeah. that one. Just <laughs> yeah, take yeah, it that's that's now. Of course, own, of course. I, own it until Wemby does it too, okay? <laughs> By the way, I can't wait to see you guys face off. What do you know about him? I mean... He's just a different uh, type of human. No? His body, <laughs> his, his arms. I think he's going to be one of those guys that you play against, like how people feel against, for example, Gobert or myself. That oh, he's actually like taller than you know he he looked like he he blocked that shot. And but I think Wemby is going to be like at three levels Cheater, above that. Yeah. You know, he's going to block some threes where you don't expect him to be even close and things like that. So. Yeah, I think he's going to be a very, very special player. He just might need a little bit of time to get adjusted to everything. You were already wanting to join this Boston Celtics team with, with Jalen and Jason, and now after the news yesterday, Drew Holiday joining this Celtics team. What's the excitement and just the level of that, knowing that you guys are, I mean, going to be really, really good this season? Uh, Amanda called you guys the Avengers. It, felt like, today. it, it felt like Brad was a forming the, an Avengers team. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think... The talent that has been brought together, it's, I don't know who else has that, you know. Obviously, some other teams are making some moves, but uh, we have uh, we have brought in some incredible players and, and some experienced players uh, that have already done big things in this league. And, yeah, and it's, it's, it's in our hands. As I said, it's in our hands to to fulfill our potential and, and, and prove that, that we are what we say we are. One thing that you bring to this team that it just simply did not have last season, especially in a, in a big way, is post scoring. Mm -hmm. uh, you were second in the league among bigs last season in, in post uh, shooting percentage at 61%. Uh, what, when you get the ball in the post, what's your go-to move? What are the, how are you trying to gain an advantage? Like when you get the ball there, 
What's going through your mind? Even though you always have an advantage with your height. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. That is true. I think it's, uh, yeah, a couple summers ago, I would say I, I want to give some credit to my friend and my trainer, uh, who's a very big numbers guy. And, um, and he, 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 he told me the reality, you know, I wasn't as effective. So I looked at my game, I looked at the things I was doing and how I could improve. And, and uh, post was something I, I kind of was always in my game, but I just knew I had to be more effective to be elite, you know. And, and then, yeah, and just uh, perfection, some simple moves, really, because, you know, with my height, I'm able to shoot over guys and just create a little bit of rhythm, a little bit of space. And, and, and yeah, and last season, I was one of the most effective in the league. And, and, uh, and I like that I'll be able to add, like, a different dimension also to this team, you know, being able to post up and, and create from there. And if there's double teams, then I can, you know, hit my open teammates. And I'm excited about that. I'm excited about that. And, 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 and yeah, shout out to Jean, is my trainer. Just to recap, one of the best in the league scoring out of the post, one of the best defending the pick and roll at the other end of the court. That's numbers, a pretty good combination. Numbers, numbers are sounding good. What are you most excited about tomorrow? It's like getting started, what are you most excited mm -hmm. about? You know how it is. It's like this is my ninth year in, this, in the league, but every year it's like, man, I'm excited. Like for that first practice, mm -hmm. that first like, you just get a little like, a little bit of like that nerves or like I'm ready to go, you know, and then that first game, first preseason game, everything is just a fresh, fresh beginning each and each year, you know, and and this is a big stage that I haven't been on in a while with great players around me, great challenges ahead of us. And what else can I ask for? Have this you ever been on a team that was championship Head, headed to win a championship coming in and everybody is talking about it. have you ever been on a team where well Dallas the Dallas, Dallas yeah. you know we had big expectations we were uh, f uh, both years that I was there we were fifth uh, fifth seed you know so we, we were not that far off uh, but I think uh, this is a different level I think this is a different level and you can and, feel it and I can feel it yeah. I can feel it you know um, uh, so yeah as I said this is a big challenge for us big challenge you know, especially with the expectations going into the season, take it day by day and 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 do and do what we need to do. With that championship talk, obviously that's expectations, right? And, and we kind of just talked about it there. You haven't been in that type of situation before. Why are you ready to shoulder those expectations and to perform when it matters most? Mm -hmm. Listen, I don't care. I have full confidence in myself and my skill set. I have full confidence that I will do what's necessary for the team to win games. And if that's having a, for this matchup not uh, playing in a certain way, I will believe me, I am there in my career where I just want to win. And that's why I'm here and, and I just don't see it not working. You know, of course, you need to have a little bit of luck. Everybody has to stay healthy. We have to have, you know, all these things also help us. But, but what we can control, we're going to control. and. and I'm excited. And that's why Brad wanted to bring this man in. Kristaps Porzingis, man, we appreciate the Thank time. You. Yep. Good luck and this season. We can't wait to see you out there. Quickly before you. you go, I hear oh, that yes, you're I really, can't forget this. really into ping pong. That's like Love something. That, okay, do you, do you want to? Um, Here's your paddle. I mean, Thank we can. You. We can. Uh, you want to serve one over yeah, here to ask? Yeah, I got one for I you too, Mark, if you want. Um, we just need the net. We could use the monitor as the uh, as the I'm, net. I'm but, uh, Let's see if we can go back and forth here. Oh, look, he just did. Wait, hold on. Before we get into this. How you did that? There is a you know this. There is a ping pong table in the players' lounge at the facility. Just before I came over here, yep. we set up the table for the first time. I played against one of the best players I've heard in the organization. It's oh. Steve. It's uh, he's uh, one of our physical therapists. Physical therapists. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. And, what uh, happened? Uh, I don't what remember. Happened? I don't remember. Oh, he must have got you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> he got you. <laughs> I don't remember. Convenient amnesia. But, uh, look, I need to get back. Uh, I'm a little bit rusty, you know. I haven't yeah. played for a little bit. You've, so wait, you've been worrying me? about basketball. Ball. Exactly, but this is important also. <laughs> All right, give us give us a serve to end the day. Right now, let's do it. Oh man! Oh no! Oh, we see why he lost. Hey. <laughs> this table is broken. That's what happened. Okay. All right, folks. We can do it again if we need. That didn't just happen. We're, we're gonna pretend that didn't hey, happen. Another ball? Do you want to? Do you want to? Redemption. Redemption. Another one. Redemption. You want one more? One more. All right. Ready? Mm -hmm. 
<laughs> okay. Yeah, we've seen. We've seen. We've seen hey, that's why Steve, 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 Steve going to be taking your money. <laughs> All right, Amanda, <laughs> take, take us home. All right, everyone. Well, thank you so much. We're really looking forward to tomorrow. We appreciate everyone hanging out with us. Just stay tuned. We have a lot coming to you from training camp this week. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Good luck this week.